Seberg, and what a job they did today against an East St. Louis team that can compete with just about anybody. Absolutely no doubt about it. I was just so impressed with the patience that Kerry Grove showed with their offense, their confidence in that offense, but you know, everybody in this place was on pins and needles every time East St. Louis touched the football because they had such an explosive offense. Each player, whether it be the quarterback, running back, or wide receivers, could take it to the house every time they touched the ball. So just really an exciting game. Now, whether you want to say David and Goliath or Tortoise in the Hair, the winner, just like Kerry Grove. Let's go downstairs to Donnie Tillman. All right, I'm standing here with the man himself. Um, I mean, state championship. I mean, what does it feel like right now? It feels unreal right now. It just it's something we've just practiced for and prepared basically our entire lives playing football, and it just came down to this moment, and now we got it, and it just feels amazing. What was the stadium like? I mean, this crowd was rocking in support of you guys today. Oh, the community really came through for us on this one. There was, there's so many people here that when we walked out for the first time, everyone was just in awe. How many times did you hear this week that, you know, you guys were David, they were Goliath, but did you think you would come out as champion today? Yes, of course we did. We always had confidence in ourselves the entire week and the entire year that we were going to get the championship. We did. All right, well, go get that medal. Go get that championship. Congratulations, young man. Thank you so much. All right, guys, send it back to you. All right, Nick Hisson literally leaving it all on the field as you see him limp over for the trophy presentation. And there it is, the state championship trophy headed back to Kerry Grove as they win it here in heart-stopping fashion, 37 to 36. It all starts here in the woods of Illinois. Walnut, hickory, oak, individually selected and harvested for your home. Each tree, each log, milled to perfection with the same attention to detail for two generations. It's not just wood, it's Corsaw hardwood lumber. Grown in Illinois, made in Illinois. Corsaw hardwood lumber, just west of Canton, on Route 9. Great careers begin with Nika and the IBEW. Nika and the IBEW's 23,000 square foot training facility gives you real world practical experience. Earn as you learn as an electrical apprentice. You'll receive both the classroom and the hands-on training you need to succeed. My education is being paid for and I'll have zero college debt. Healthcare, a great pension. You really can't do better than working in the electrical trade. Make this the last job application you will ever need to fill out. Apply now for the electrical apprenticeship. Nika and IBEW Local 34. Dig, dig the pig, dig the pig from Butcher's Pizza. Locally made with the finest ingredients, the frozen pizza with the just made taste. The quality pizza that your family deserves, a quick meal you'll be proud to serve. IHSA, committed to keeping student-athletes safe. Through educational initiatives and national partnerships, we're going the distance to develop safer protocols for our teams. Plus, we continue to improve scheduling and conditioning to reduce injuries from preseason through each state championship. 31 sports, 350,000 student-athletes, and one goal, player safety. The IHSA, the future plays here. Stand by. Back in DeKalb for a very exciting finish here. 37-36, Kerry Grove with the win over East St. Louis. And uh, Jack, my hat's off to East St. Louis and Kerry Grove. Without a doubt for me, 26 years of covering this uh, championship uh, weekend for the IHSA TV network. Without a doubt, the most exciting, thrilling game I've seen. Absolutely. I agree 100% with you. I mean, I really enjoyed Kerry Grove in that offense. I mean, it's just something maybe from a coaching standpoint or whatever, but they just did a great job. They were so methodical, so so perfect in the blocking schemes up front. They changed things up. But then on the other hand, East St. Louis just had such great talent, such great speed. Anybody touching the ball could take it all away. And uh, you're right. It was just an outstanding football game. When they got that turnover, 
it looked like it, uh, you know, I thought for sure they were going to drive the length of the field and win. What a job by Jamison Sheehan at quarterback. The big game for Nick Hisson, but Sheehan did a great job running that offense and running the football quite a bit today. Well, when you run this offense, you've got to have a quarterback that's smart enough to make those reads, and he's done that the entire year and so very effectively. And, of course, putting weight on it, 190 pounds, made him a very effective runner, as you can see right here. He had a great game and did an outstanding year for Kerry Grove and led him to the state championship. She had 101 yards rushing with three touchdowns and one big completion on fourth and 17. 23-yard uh, uh, conversion there that led to a touchdown. And uh, even with Nick Hisson on the sideline, they were able to get it into the end zone and get that go-ahead score. And the, the defense, I mean, it's, it's you know, you, you, you give up 36 points and you think, well, you know, the defense didn't play very well. Oh, yes, they did. Well, it's hard to think of how do you defend a team like this? I mean, you can put schemes down. Okay, I know I want to play certain coverages and this and that, but you still got to be able to stop them with the outstanding speed that they have. It's a quarterback. He's a great athlete. They have great receivers. You can see the scrambling ability he has, but they just did a great job. They played a three-man front. They contained them. They don't he had one man come up the middle. They doubled, and uh, St. Louis had a double team him. They just had a great scheme game plan defensively for East St. Louis. All right, well, <laughs> we're going to go somewhere and take a deep breath because that was a wild one and uh, an exciting game. 37 36, Kerry Grove wins the 6A state championship. Let's go over to Tony Cornish Jr., and he'll take us all the way through to the 7A game coming up soon. Thanks a lot, gentlemen. What an exciting class 6A finish. I tell you what, our hats, we tip our hats. The Trojans uh, and Brad Seberg and his staff getting the job done. 37-36 East St. Louis losing in the class 6A championship. You might hear all the uh, applause behind me. We have the Trojans uh, taking their team pictures right now, and their fans are saluting them, and it is a, going to be a grand party, no doubt about it, tonight in Trojan land as they celebrate a great championship. Again, 37-36 is your final in the Class 6A championship here at Husky Stadium in DeKalb. Of course, we have Class 7A's championship game coming up later tonight at 7 o'clock. We also have our uh, 8A championship coming up, but some of the highlights here from the second half, we see East St. Louis trying to get things going but here is the big turnover the turn the tide and really seal the deal for the Trojans and uh, that interception says it all and you could see the celebration and then the uh, they knew it was over at that point it was safe to say that uh, the 37 36 victory was in the can and uh, that's Noah Riley uh, we saw him offensively tight end make a few great receptions but that was going to be a play that will be remembered forever in Trojan high school football history he is part of it and Noah Riley is probably celebrating with his family right now and his teammates as well congratulations to the Trojans on a great season 14 and 0 doesn't happen often but when it does happen and you win a state championship of that you remember it for quite some time time for us to take a quick break we'll be back here at Husky Stadium in just a few moments you're watching the IHSA Sports Television Network at Illinois State University, our legacy is one of preparing students to create, to explore, to lead, to make an impact. Our students graduate on time, find success in their field, and make a difference in the world. That's our legacy. What will yours be? Create your legacy at Illinois State University. There's more here than meets the eye. Corn is in the food that nourishes us. It's in the medicine and vitamins and other products that sustain us. It's in the daily essentials that help us navigate and create in the world. It's renewable and sustainable, better for our world and our future. Corn is all this and more. And the best part? It's homegrown by local farm families right here in Illinois. 
It's here. The Menards Black Friday Sale. Hurry in for best selection. Price is good through December 5th. Whether at the job site, the campsite, or at home, get power where you need it with this 4,500-watt generator. On sale for $289.99. This three-burner flat iron griddle features 520 square inches of cooking space. Get it for only $219.99. Check out these and more amazing Black Friday deals at Menards. Available in store only while supplies last. We know it's difficult to decide where to invest first each year. But your farm and family depend on it. We want you to have your most successful season yet. And that's why we've cataloged over 12 million corn plants and 20,000 germinated seeds. Whether you're just beginning to monitor equipment performance or fine-tuning your equipment, our dealers are here to help. This is your year to know that you're doing the best you possibly can for your farm and your family. A seed, a spark, an idea that something so simply sustainable could provide harvests that help feed us all. Innovations for a greener future, fuels that leave the air cleaner, medicines to make us healthier, exports that benefit the world. Our families live here, grow here, nurturing the land for this generation and those to come. Illinois runs on homegrown corn. Imagine if one day every water bottle could be made out of corn, a renewable resource. I feel like my generation as a whole has realized that we do use a lot of plastic and we are trying to limit that by using reusable straws rather than plastic ones and reusable cups and water bottles. My name is Alexis Hartman and I grew up on my family's grain farm in Waterloo, Illinois, where we grow corn, soybeans and wheat. Now I go to the University of Illinois where I major in agriculture and consumer economics. Most people don't realize that traditional plastic is made from petroleum. We're utilizing petroleum at a rate faster than what it can be replenished. My name is John Coppert, and we do corn-based research for companies in the private sector focused on biorenewable products. We're taking corn as a single product and converting it into many products, one being bioplastics. Anything that utilizes a petroleum-based plastic could be replaced with a bio-based plastic today. Bio-based plastics are a better alternative to petroleum-based plastics because of the fact that they have a lower carbon footprint than petroleum-based plastics. I feel like a lot of people would be receptive to a plastic made from corn just because it's very renewable. We can grow it out in the fields, grow it for future generations. It's not something that will eventually run out. There absolutely is opportunity to do more. The surface has not even been scratched yet in the area of biorenewables, and, and in particular, bioplastics. I think the only inconvenience that exists right now is just the simple fact that these bioplastics are just not as readily available yet as the petroleum-based plastics. But they will be, and every day, we're working to make that happen. here than meets the eye. Corn is in the food that nourishes us. It's in the medicine and vitamins and other products that sustain us. It's in the daily essentials that help us navigate and create in the world. It's renewable and sustainable, better for our world and our future. Corn is all this and more. And the best part? It's homegrown by local farm families right here in Illinois.
It starts from the moment you enter the court. We're there to serve, make sure we're creating a fair atmosphere for both teams, upholding the integrity of the game. I chose to be an official when I was a senior in high school, 17 years old. I think it's the best decision I've made. You could play and you could make extra money on the weekends on the side, and why not? In life, things aren't scripted. Games aren't pre-scripted. You know, I got into officiating because my father was an official. Officiating was part of our family life. It wasn't just the game. You get to be outside, you get to like experience the game. It's so much more fun. You can get a lot out of it. If you're an athlete, we need people like you and young athletes who can translate those skills to officiating. So much of officiating is not necessarily what you do on the court. It's how you conduct business off the court as well. Being an official, sure, it's not easy. And if it wasn't for those difficulties, I don't think I would be where I'm at. Because it helped me become not only a better official, but a better person. It happens in every town, in every game. We never have a perfect game, but the rewards always outweigh the negativities. And it's just been wonderful. City of DeKalb. I'll tell you what, a great game so far on tap. We've got more action coming up, but since it is championship weekend, and it's fitting that we have two champions in their own right joining us, and I'm, talk, I'm talking about Dave Reynolds and Marty Pickett. They join us, and you tell, you're asking why they join us? Well, these are the guys that won the first Pork and Pigskins Championship. That's the best pork shop that uh, here in the state of uh, Sandwich, I should say, in the state of Illinois. These guys are the producers of that, and of course, that was sponsored by the Illinois Pork Producers, and uh, guys, Talk about that contest. I understand it was held virtually for the for the past month or so. It was. It was, Tony. It was uh, over November 1st. Uh, they started the voting, and we made it to the uh, savory 16, and then we went to the uh, made it to the flavorful four. Talk a little bit about the competition level. What was it like? Well, we had a lot of support. We had a lot of support, and we just the support just kept on coming. And we were able to be able to make it to the Mar top. Marty, talk a little bit about what makes a good pork chop sandwich. Uh, give, give me the secret. Well, I think it needs to be uh, seasoned really well, and uh, we run it through the grinder a little bit, make it soft, and then we cook it on about 500 degree grill, sear it, and uh, hand it to them just as soon as we can, hot off the grill. Well, what does it feel to be ordained and, uh, and told to be? champions of the pork chop sandwich for the state of Illinois. That's quite the, a title. The inaugural uh, first one ever. We're, we're pretty happy with that. We're pretty happy with that. We look to come back next year and repeat. And of course, on a serious note, this is all for really a good cause and you pay tribute to a, a fallen guy, a man you probably knew and uh, talk a little bit about that. Uh, Adam uh, was a friend of mine for a long time and uh, we cooked pork chops before this started so he came down and taste tested them for us to make sure they were okay. And Adam got killed in a farm accident in 2008. And uh, so we've cooked pork chops in his honor ever since. And he was a former school employee at Normal uh, Area Community High School? Yes, sir. He was uh, our bus dispatcher for the whole district. Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah, he was a very popular guy, uh, took care of everybody. And he was a pork producer, Illinois pork producer out in Carlock, Illinois. Okay. And so, um, yeah, I got to know him really well. I was the mailman and delivered yeah, mail to him yeah, every day. So, uh, so yeah, we, we do it with a, a heavy heart, but uh, we really uh, want to carry on Adam's spirit. Of course, he was honored here at halftime in one of our games. And talk about the A-Train. Uh, that's in his honor, too. You, you, pay, you kind of pay tribute to him. And talk about the A-Train. It, it is. The A-Train the is uh, uh, our trailer that was donated by... Adam's Adam's widow and and uh, we started it up and and we've just gotten nicer every year and, and we continue to make improvements on it it's 
uh, just a, a really good it's a really good thing to have it's all right really good well thing to have. marty and dave thanks for joining us and congratulations on winning the championship <laughs> thank you Tony. all right we got champions all over the place here on this weekend <laughs> that's going to wrap up things for right now in terms of pork chop sandwiches but when we come back we'll talk a little pigskin yeah football we'll get back to uh, what's going on on the field give you a little breakdown of what's ahead don't go away more exciting insight and analysis coming up live here from husky stadium Your car is more than just transportation. It's a gathering place. Your mobile community. At CEFQ, we get that. So we offer car loans with great rates, flexible terms, and no hidden fees. We work with you to get the loan you need for the vehicle you want. Because getting there together is better than going it alone. CEFQ, not a bank, better. Start your next project at Builder's Warehouse. We have over 15 colors of vinyl laminate flooring in stock, starting at $1.85 a square foot. Get it done at Builder's Warehouse on Southwest Washington Street or visit us online at bwpeoria.net. Other dealers tell you why to buy from them. At Bob Grimm Chevrolet, we want our customers, like Chelsea, to share the day they experience the Bob Grimm way. Hands down, the best customer service I've ever experienced. We'll be customers for life. Make 2021 the year you drive away in a Chevrolet, the Bob Grimm way. Do you see the world the way I do? I'm kind of an artist. I take random things around the house and make them into the most amazing sculptures. Evan, do you know where all the spoons are? At OSF Healthcare Children's Hospital of Illinois, they see the world the way I do. They put kids first with care designed just for me. And once again, welcome back to Husky Stadium. St. Rita and Wheaton North are up next. That's right, exciting class 7A action is coming your way. State championship on the line here in DeKalb. And uh, it should be another exciting matchup. And what, what a day it's been so far. Great games on tap from 10 a.m. And, of course, we just watched East St. Louis losing state championship with class 6A. But uh, I tell you what, the action in class 7A is going to be just as electric as we have some teams on the field that are hungry for state championship championship exposure and I think it's going to be a pretty good game for a full four quarters so you want to lock and load and stay with us here on IHSA Sports Television Network and the men who will be bringing you all the exciting play-by-play -play and color analysis are standing by up in the booth right now David Mark take it away all right thank you very much Tony and uh, you know Mark uh, this is game number seven of eight here this weekend and you each game has its own personality coming into the game and then within the game and for those folks that just got done maybe their heartbeats just starting to slow down after watching the Kerry Grove East St. Louis game this game's gonna have a different personality than that well every game has its own identity and we've seen wing offenses we've seen wishbones we've seen spread offenses we've seen incredible individual play and team play and we get treated for two more good ones here tonight you know for this first one St. Rita and Wheaton North uh, you're not going to see a wing tee. You're going to see maybe more conventional football, if you want to look at it that way. Both these teams very tradition-oriented. Wheaton North and along St. Reed have won state championships, and they've gotten here uh, by virtue of just taking care of business. Well, both teams have a tradition, as you just mentioned, and both teams, I think we'll see two very physical football teams tonight, and we'll see that in the 8A game as well. So if you like hard hitting, stay right here, because you're going to see some people punching each other in the mouth, and both these uh, teams are very, very capable of challenging each other on the defensive side and as we know defense is what usually wins these ball games you know I know it is true for you and me we wait and wait and wait I can't imagine what it's like for the players and coaches they've been watching all the games before them they've been ready to go and when you get to four o'clock on the Saturday afternoon in the 7 a game uh, your stomach's churning oh there's no doubt you know you want to play that 10 a.m. game right get it done and win a championship and get out of here but for one of these teams the, the wait is going to be worth it when they hoist the trophy here in about two hours of course St. Rita got here by virtue of their victory in the semifinals. Wheaton North defeated Brother Rice and maybe somewhat of a surprise. So you have yourself a couple of teams here that truly are playing their best football this season. Well, and, you know, down the stretch, both of these teams were firing on all cylinders. That Wheaton North game, to be perfectly honest with you, that surprised me. But that, again, tells you how good of a defensive team they are. And they're going to have some challenges tonight with the likes of Caleb Brown and his offense that he is a big part of. Look for him to get 20, 25 touches tonight. Special players in this ball game. You're going to meet them, and we're going to bring you home. 7A battle coming up next at St. Rita and Wheaton North.
There's more here than meets the eye. Corn is in the food that nourishes us. It's in the medicine and vitamins and other products that sustain us. It's in the daily essentials that help us navigate and create in the world. It's renewable and sustainable, better for our world and our future. Corn is all this and more. And the best part? It's homegrown by local farm families right here in Illinois. At Illinois State University, our legacy is one of preparing students to create, to explore, to lead, to make an impact. Our students graduate on time, find success in their field, and make a difference in the world. That's our legacy. What will yours be? Create your legacy at Illinois State University. The Menards Black Friday Sale. Hurry in for best selection. Price is good through December 5th. Relax in style with this heat and massage rocker recliner. Only $249.99. Stay warm this winter with this 54-inch electric fireplace. It can also fit up to a 65-inch TV. On sale for $219.99 after rebate. Check out these and more amazing Black Friday deals at Menards. Available in store only while supplies last. championship matches the St. Rita Mustangs and the Falcons from Wheaton North. And hi again, everybody. I'm Dave Bernhardt, joined as always by Mark Lindo, and we come to you with a couple of teams here in terms of St. Rita and Wheaton North. A couple of teams on a hot streak. Both of them have won 10 games in a row. Now, St. Rita dropped two of their first three games. They've won everything since. And how about Wheaton North? Their only loss came in week three. It was in overtime. So we're set for this one, and I'm looking, Mark, offense, defense, and I'm, I'm really curious your thoughts. What are we going to look for when St. Rita has the ball? I'll tell you what. We're going to look at the Mustangs offense averaging 30 points a game coming in, and this is a really stingy Wheaton North defense. Allows only 9.8 points per game. Nine times Wheaton North has held an opponent to one score or less, Dave. So St. Rita's skill and speed and their balance will be a challenge to the fundamentally sound Falcon defense here tonight. Should be a fun one to get after it. Wheaton North seems to do whatever it takes to get the job done, whether they win 10 to 3 or whether they score over 40 points. That's what it's been like here in the playoffs. So as we zero in a little bit more, what are you looking for for our keys to the game? Well, I've got a few of them. Control the clock. You know, especially for Wheaton North. Play keep away. Keep St. Rita and Caleb Brown on the boundary. Third down efficiency. Move the chain. Sustain drives. Time of possession. Oh, so important for both teams tonight, especially for Wheaton North, and then turnover margin, always a big part of a football game. The Falcons of Wheaton North, plus 21. Are you kidding me? St. Rita has to have great ball security tonight. You know, you take a look, we've had stars galore here so far this weekend, and you mentioned Caleb Brown on the other side. You know, you, you take a look at a team that is so well balanced in Wheaton North. Joel Wardinsky, the head coach for the Falcons, have nurtured them along. They are a very confident team coming into this one. Well, they are, and they, they know how to get it done. They were a little bit uh, under the radar as the season started, but again, once their defense kind of dug their cleats in the ground, this team started to know this uh, football team and how much it can play a physical brand of football. All right, let's go. We've got a 7-8 championship for you. Coming up next, here on the IHSA Championship Television Network. 2021 IHSA Football State Thank Finals you, is brought to you by... Layuna. Start your career in construction today at layunacareers.org. And by Menards. Save big money at Menards on all your home improvement needs. Well, 
It's what you want it to be. I mean, if you come in with the right attitude, you can make it a career. Uh, well, first of all, all the benefits. Uh, the pay, of course. I can't be put. You know, I like working. I like being outdoors and working. So I think that's a big plus for me. The money I make, I've been able to go on vacations when I want to and buy a new car. And... Together, we made it through one of the most challenging years in our lives. Together, we helped our schools and students achieve great things. We all partnered and struggled and overcame together. Because we know together we can do great things. Now we aim to be better than ever. We are IEA, the Illinois Education Association, and we all are stronger together. championship week north to kick off the Mustangs from St. Rita to receive and person to keep an eye on of course we were talking about Caleb Brown all night Calvin Lee number five is back there to return this kick also deep Liam Bardos are you check that you will see deep for St. Rita Nick Norton and it will be Tyler O'Connor that will put this ball in play for the Falcons. There's B.J. Hall. He can take it to the house. We've seen a couple of long kickoff returns already this weekend. Now Connor's going to boot this one deep from the one-yard line. Spinning and shy of the 20. They got it to the man they maybe didn't want it to get to. That's Caleb Brown, but good coverage by the Falcons from Wheaton North. Wheaton North saying in their lanes, that sends an early message right there that they get the All-American of football in his first touch on a kickoff return. And Wheaton North, because of fundamentally sound special teams, keeps them to start inside their own 20-yard line as this defense will dig in now. The quarterback for St. Rita. Three-year starter, it's Tommy Ulatowski, familiar on this field. He was a starting quarterback in a championship game two years ago. Big hole up the middle. And a great cut across the 35-yard line. First carry of the game goes to Ethan Middleton. Middleton just a quick opener. Looks like a little inside zone. And he knew what to do with he found that first hole, 19 yards in that pickup as he hit that hole quickly, and it opened up in a hurry. Middleton just a sophomore he got a lot of playing time early this year to the injury to Brown More positive yardage this time straight up the gut. Let's go down onto the field and check in with Donnie Tillman Hey, good evening guys St. Rita said that their opponents going to be tough But so far so good for them as far as moving the ball and as far as Warrenville North well, They said they've been here a week north. Excuse me. They said they've been here before and the reason why they say that is because of this uh, spring season, they were able to play Batavia actually on this field in the very last game. So they feel like it's uh, picking up where they left off, but this time they want to win the championship. Well, they're going to have to stop Caleb Brown because he brings that pass across the field into Wheaton North Territory to the Falcons' 38-yard line. You know, you get him the ball speed and space, and he can take a 10-yard completion like that, yards after the catch. He picks up 20 yards total, and you see not one, not two, not three, but blue jerseys chasing him down from behind. Caleb Brown, his final high school game. The next game he plays will be the All-American Bowl. That's in January. More positive yardage, more big hole. It's up front. 
That game just shy of the 30 yard line and there is Caleb Brown's numbers. And those are small because he was injured in week one, did not return until the second round of the playoffs. Right, he has not been full speed really till the quarterfinals. But I'll tell you what, that last pitch and catch that we saw, he is back to big time game speed. Mustangs will stay on the ground, Middleton again. Boy, and they are firing off that offensive line. Charlie Hoppersker, Ballon Erickson, Colin Gerger, Logan Blake, and Nick Strelzik. Big defensive line. That line averaging 281 pounds, and it leads to an eight-yard pickup and a first down. Rita averages uh, 345 yards per game. This drive has been efficient. They've mixed in a pass or two, and then the ground game has been just outstanding, moving the ball right downfield. Ulatowski will keep it. Short pickup on first down. Ulatowski, the CCL Offensive Player of the Year. He is a very versatile athlete. See a little zone read there. Caleb Brown draws a lot of attention, doesn't he, on that mesh between quarterback and Brown. Ulatowski decided to keep it. Not much going. In the backfield now for St. Rita, wearing number 45 is a freshman. Freshman fullback, James Kingsbury. To the outside. And a cut at the 20. Contact. And Caleb Brown will take it inside the 15 down to the 12 and another first down. Boy, Caleb Brown, just a really special player. He had contact, you mentioned, with Jake Capel, the defensive back, but no. Brown says, I'm not going down after the first hit. Yards after contact, coming downhill at you. He can shake and bake, but he's strong lower body as well. A complete player. He can catch it. He can run it. He can punt return. He can kick return. He's done it all. He's done it all very well. And he has scored touchdowns in every one of those ways you just described. He's in the backfield right now for the eighth play of this drive, the opening drive of your 7-8 championship game. Direct snap to the corner. He's not going to go anywhere. Drop it for a couple yard loss on the stop is Caden Libby, the 6'1", 180 pound senior. Uh, Caden Libby, a great play. He's got 40 tackles on the year. And that was none bigger than that one in that situation. Bring it Brown down one on one on the outside. St. Rita had gone to the old power eye, if you will. They had three in the backfield trying to get blockers out in front for Caleb Brown. And a loss of two. They get behind the six for the first time here in this opening drive. Now with 828 and counting. Yulotowski has Middleton directly behind him. Motion from Calvin Lee. It will be Lee. He'll be tripped up. This time, it is Tyler O'Connor that shot the gap. So we talked about their defense has made back-to-back -back great plays. Nice individual by the ankles, but gets it done. Really nice play by Tyler O'Connor, number 10, 6 one 6 drive. DB, two back-to-back -back nice plays by Wheaton North. And that time, a tackle for loss, minus five. Third down and 17. Zayredo is taking the early timeout. An important play on the opening possession of this game. The Mustangs need 17 to keep it going. Uh, this would be a would-be pass situation. Tommy Ulatowski, 106 for 189 on the season, 1,535 yards, eight touchdowns against four interceptions. And you would certainly expect him to go up top right now. You would certainly expect him to have his first choice to be Caleb Brown, but that's going to be the first choice that Wheaton North attempts to take away. The question is, will the Falcons double-team Caleb Brown on this play? Let's see Tommy Ulatowski. We'll see whether Kyle Clayton gets into this ball game because he has been injured throughout the year. We've already seen Caleb Brown, Charlie Flynn banged up as well. But that offensive line, oh my, have they moved this ball down the field? Mentioned him earlier. Erickson Strelzik, Arbister, Blake, and Gerger. They're in charge now of a third down and 17. Have to get to the two yard line. Base four man front right here for the Falcons. All, all those hands in the dirt. They show blitz on the outside. Ulatowski's in trouble. 
The pressure as he was looking to get it to Middleton, but the pressure forced Ulatowski to get rid of it quickly. And that was that blitz that came from the edge. They rushed four. They put a backer on the edge and just flushed out Ulatowski on that play. R risk reward, and it came up big for the Falcons. So it was a bend but not break defense. There, your defensive lineman, along with some linebackers as well. Rex Kroger, Fred Elfman, outstanding. Ross Dans, he'll keep an eye on number 33 tonight. We already talked about Caden Libby and Tyler O'Connor. Field goal attempt, 36 yards coming up from Connor Talty, one of the top kickers in the state. Eight for eight in field goals this year. And that field goal attempt sails wide left. So the defense comes up big for Wheaton North on the opening possession of the game by St. Rita. That defense was moved on just a bit, but they made two TFLs back-to-back -back on second down, third down, forced the field goal opportunities. You mentioned a great kicker. He pulled that one a little bit to the left, and Wheaton North, the bottom line, no points on the board. And that's what they needed to do on this first possession. They made a statement right there with those back-to-back -back TFLs. Well, head coach Joe Wardinsky of the Falcons says, you know, we're going to give up some yards. We just have a way of keeping people out of the end zone. Now they'll bring their offensive unit on the field, led by quarterback Mark Forcucci. He's headed to Holy Cross after this senior season. This is Luke Beadle. Beadle will get positive yards, about three-yard pickup. For Beetle, Beetle stepping into the starting lineup. He replaces Brayton Maskey. Maskey, a three-year starter, injured his knee in the third or in the sixth week of the season. As you look at for Cucci's numbers, now he can get the job done on the ground as well. But very efic efficient passer. Yeah, Holy Cross commits, so he'll play collegiate football out in the East Patriot League, and he is more than a game manager. He is an outstanding passer and a great decision maker. Marcucci's first pass of the day. Gets it to his favorite receiver, and it dropped as Seth Kortenhoven can't handle it. Again, the temperatures here this weekend have been very chilly, and we've seen this, Mark, in almost every game, early in the game, receivers having a tough time handling the ball. Yeah, Kortenhoven comes in with 59 catches, and that one hit him flat out right in the hands. A little bit of a skinny post. He was lined up at the wide receiver spot. That's a play he would like to have back, and I flat out guarantee you that Forcucci will come back to his favorite target in a little while. Third and seven. Here comes pressure. Percucci gets a block. Ball in the air and onto the turf. Well, he came right back to Kortenhoven, but St. Rita nearly had the pick near the 30-yard line. Mustangs in double coverage on that rollout. Really good throw by Forcucci right here on the run, but look at one, two white shirts right there. One uh, linebacker in front, one safe a corner behind. Really good coverage by St. Rita. Number seven, Johnny Schmidt nearly had his eighth interception of the season. And Caleb Brown is deep. Tyler O'Connor do the punting, has to go high to get it. This will come up short. Brown thought about it, but made the right decision. Mustangs to take over again. 6.42 to play, no score. Each team's had the ball once here in your 7A title. At Illinois State University, our legacy is one of preparing students to create, to explore, to lead, to make an impact. Our students graduate on time, find success in their field, and make a difference in the world. That's our legacy. What will yours be? Create your legacy at Illinois State University. There's more here than meets the eye. Corn is in the food that nourishes us. It's in the medicine and vitamins and other products that sustain us. It's in the daily essentials that help us navigate and create in the world. It's renewable and sustainable, better for our world and our future. Corn is all this and more. And the best part? It's homegrown by local farm families right here in Illinois.
third game of the day. It's always when sunlight turns to dusk, turns to darkness by the time we are done, and that means temperatures here in the Thanksgiving weekend will tend to drop 43 degrees. That wind uh, could pick up. That temperature will drop. You know, this Mustang team, they lost their first ball game of the season. Went to Kentucky, had a road game that was a really, really significant win for their team coming together before they lost in week three, and it's been all W since then. DJ Stewart in the backfield. He gets the call. He gets the carry. He'll check it up near midfield. So now you're getting a look at the depth in the backfield that St. Reed has been able to develop with the injury to Caleb Brown. We saw Ethan Middleton handling the running load in the first possession, and this time it's fellow sophomore DJ Stewart, six foot, 205 pounder. Yeah, he comes in averaging six and a half yards per carry. That one was right downhill into the teeth of the defense. He's going to get it again. A different type of runner than Middleton, and he is not going down. And that should be enough for the first down. Pelly Marker at the 49. And it would be. I think this is against the Mustangs. Going to negate a really nice run by Stewart. On the play. We got a hold on the offense. Number 72. That'll be 10 yards for the spot. Replay the down. So take away the 11 yard gain back it up 10 from there. It's a net difference of 21 There's the hold right in front of you number 71 Had his hands inside the official must have thought they could slipped outside the shoulder pads It's one of their better players Kyle Gerger in all conference position uh, Tackle and he is indeed a division one prospect pretty solid block see a good picture of that young man there. He can pancake you First down and long same play. Penalty yardage back. Add a couple more to it. Yeah, that play they pulled. Valen Erickson, the Missouri recruit, number 71. Watch him pull right there. Great block on the inside. Crushing block at the point of attack. When you see big linemen that can pull from one side to the other, get out in front and kick out a defensive end, you got a special kind of player. Valen Erickson, 6'6", 305 pounds. Staying on the ground, Stewart wrapped up by the ankles. It will be third down and long. So early on, we've seen Wheaton North give up a 6-7, give up 6-7, then get a TFL, then get another TFL, and that one's actually probably a loss of a foot or two. So three TFLs for the Falcons already this football game. And that time it was Jackson Moore who knifed in. Three TFLs from three different players. DJ Stewart. Ran off. He's at the 45 yard line. He had to. He lost his shoe. <laughs> now they're going to count to make sure they have 11. Play clock winding down, still looking for a play. And St. Rita will have to take a timeout. Their second of this first quarter, and it comes with 4.47 to play. Timeout, St. Rita. Timeout for us as well. No score here early on. Your 7 8 championship game from DeKalb. I couldn't ask for a better agent, for a better company, in a disaster where you have no idea where to start. I learned that there's not a given in life. It takes a team. There's people that are going to watch out for us and they care. It's been pretty stressful. Once we saw Lori and got our plan, it's... Uh, like a huge weight lifted. Season 216 wins, 92 losses. Wanted to make sure he got it right. Kuska, the offensive coordinator for St. Rita, faced with this third down and nine. Coach Kuska, Hall of Famer at St. Rita and the Catholic League, so he's been around the block. He chooses the pass. 
He chooses to get it to Brown. Brown has room. Brown still on his feet. Inside the 20-yard line, Caleb Brown. All you do is get the ball in his hands and have him make something happen. This one good for 32 yards. What a well-schemed play. Look at this. It. An inside screen, if you will. They pop it out to the perimeter, get the ball speed with your best player, maybe one of the premier players in the entire state of Illinois, if not the country, and he knows what to do. They're coming back across the grain. Blocking set up out on the boundary. Already four plays of 15 or more yards for the Mustangs. And this will go for a loss of yardage. Once again, the running back on this series, DJ Stewart, got the call. Been a running back by committee, but this young man, well, that young man can get it done. There's a nice picture of Caleb Brown. If you give him all the accolades that he had coming into this season, it would take us about 10 minutes to, to read off his numbers. He split left. Yulatowski looking his way. Fade into the end zone. A little bit too much for Brown. On the coverage for Wheaton North, Jake Capel. Yeah, they're going to try to have a safety over the top every time when you see Caleb Brown. You'll see double teams. Somebody underneath him or playing a man-to-man -man and that safety help over the top. Now, when you have a player like that that draws double coverage, obviously someone else is open. But they still want to get the ball to that guy. So it's, it's a little bit of a chess match between Offensive defensive coordinators on both both teams here. Stewart leaves. Bell goes into the backfield. Brown goes into the backfield. He'll get it. Caleb Brown is hit and dropped. He ran right into Jackson Moore. Tell you what, Wheaton North, their ability to move laterally defensively is just incredibly impressive. They have great gap responsibility. They know where they're supposed to be on the field and they feel that responsibility. Fourth down and 11. It'll be the second field goal attempt of the night for Connor Talty. He missed from 36 earlier in this period. He had the distance. He just hooked it left. Got a little bit of advantage here because he's on the hash mark so he can come across the football a little bit better. This from 34 yards out. And a penalty flag down, and I don't know whether they got the snap off. Flag was thrown by the back judge. Five and snap, dead ball, dead ball. delay a game, on the offense. Five yards, come on, replay, put that. So we North fans were wondering why, why wouldn't we decline it? He missed, but that penalty came before because the snap clock ran out. So there's the idea behind that. Todd Kuska looking on, and there comes that flag. As you saw, the play clock go to zero. A 39-yard attempt for Talty. The junior for St. Rita. Looking to give his team the lead here in the first quarter. Hits this one strong and misses again. Connor Talty, who came into this game eight for eight in field goals. Two misses here in the first period. And that one stayed wide to the right, I believe. So the adjustment wasn't made. He thought it was good. Oh, it did hook left, same as the other one. And I don't know if the wind impacted that or not. He had plenty of distance, no doubt about that. So St. Rita again turned away. Wheaton North second possession of this game. This starts from the 20 again. Quickly to Kortenhoven. Wind affected that pass, didn't come out of the hands cleanly for for Cucci, and then the ball kind of hung up there for a little bit. No gain on that completion. Well, they said that they went a bunch set trips to the right, got the ball out, a little split end screen. He had two blockers out in front of him, but that play just because of the wind, I think a little bit too slow to develop. You see there the right tackle, number 53, Matt Rambasic. He is a sophomore. He's stepping in for Greg Fotonopoulos, the 6'5", 295-pound senior. So big shoes to fill for Rambasic. St. Rita, a five-man front right now. A little bit of change. They're usually a four-man front, a little bit of threes. To the near side of the field, and stretching forward. That 
picked up a couple of extra yards for Luke Beadle. So you put more men in the box if you're St. Rita, which is certainly the way you want to stop a run game. But once you get to the second level, there's not as many bodies around. The interior of that line with Jabril, McNabb, and Giuseppe Yerseta. Outstanding. You have the Kingsbury Twins. A couple of linebackers for the Mustangs. We'll see whether Bartos Hall, Lutton, and Scanlon, and Schmidt be able to defend the passing attack. And number five right there, Mark Parcucci. Five wide for the Falcons. Should be man-to-man -man coverage by St. Rita. Third and four. Had to get rid of it quickly enough for a first down. And a penalty flag goes down. The completion to Matt Cousage. Let's check out the flag. So for Cucci, deliver this one on target. Cousage should move the sticks and... Really a well-thrown ball right on time by Farcucci, seven yards. Here to play, personal foul. Face match, 15 yards on the defense. Head back to the line, first down. Seven on the play, 15 on the penalty, make it a 22-yard walk to the other end. Here's Mark Farcucci, semifinals. How about efficiency? 12 of 16, 170 yards and two touchdowns. That came in the 45-27 win over Brother Rice. Yeah, his asset is he can throw every pass. He can throw the ball to the boundary. He can throw the post. He can throw the deep ball. He can throw the fade. Just a really nice touch and a complete player from a passing standpoint. On first down. Trying that left side of the line, Walker Owens, he along with Beadle, have stepped in with Brayton Maskey. I was talking about Maskey, a torn MCL in week six, yet he played last week. He said, I've, I've got to be out there. I'm not going to be playing in college. If I hurt it, I hurt it. And unfortunately for him in the third quarter of that game, he did hurt that knee again. Yeah, unfortunate because a gutsy young man he is. Offensive quarter for the Falcons, Nick Reiter. He is indeed trying to mix things up right now. He's gone inside zone. He's gone outside zone. He's gone bubble screens. He's throwing the ball down the middle. A little bit of everything challenging this St. Rita front seven. Marcucci stays in the pocket. Deep left side. The catch is made, but out of bounds. What a catch by Kortenhoven. You know, it was a hitch and go route. Look, Forcucci looks right first. There's the pump fake. Then he goes back to his favorite target. High point in that football. What a great catch. All for naught as he ran out of distance at the boundary. How about that ball that Forcucci threw? Yeah, right on the hands. But that'll bring up the third down and nine in midfield. We talked about it, one of our keys in the open is third down conversions. You want to be third three, third four, don't you? Not third and nine. That's not an enviable position. Here comes a blitz. Marcucci will run away from it. In trouble, running out of room. Complete. Did Marcucci stay in bounds when he released? He did. And the drive will stay alive. What incredible improv by Marcucci. And Karsten Libby, the wide receiver, gathers that ball in with his hands out in front of him. For Cucci, but he just extended the play, extended the play, extended the play. 16 yards on that third and nine conversion. And the Falcons got a little bit of giddy up right now, a little rhythm in their offense. How about that vision and patience yeah, yeah. from Mark Forcucci? And how about the arm strength? I mean, he was flushed out of the pocket. He was running to the boundary, almost out of bounds. And then he was able to square shoulders and throw a dart for the first down. Kortenhoven, the direct snap came to Tyler O'Connor, faked the handoff to Kortenhoven, and O'Connor will keep it. And that will wind us down to the first quarter. Well, if you're with us in the 6A game, you saw a lot of points on the board. Here, after one, nothing, nothing. Here's that big play to put Wheaton North in position as we get ready to start the second quarter.
just made taste The quality pizza that your family deserves A quick meal you'll be proud to serve Do you see the world the way I do? My mom says I play too many video games, but what she doesn't know is that I'm actually making more money than she is as a YouTuber. Lacey, do you know why there's a new car in the driveway with a bow on it? You're welcome, Mom. At OSF Healthcare Children's Hospital of Illinois, they see the world the way I do. They put kids first, with care designed just for me. Your car is more than just transportation. It's a gathering place. Your mobile community. At CefQ, we get that. So we offer car loans with great rates, flexible terms, and no hidden fees. We work with you to get the loan you need for the vehicle you want. Because getting there together is better than going it alone. CefQ, not a bank, better. Builder's Warehouse is home of the one price covers it, Quartz Countertop. Don't be surprised by fees, be surprised by Quartz Beauty. Quartz Countertops, get it done and get it done right at Builder's Warehouse. Or start planning at bwpeoria.net. Other dealers tell you why to buy from them. At Bob Grimm Chevrolet, we want our customers, like Scott, to share the day they experience the Bob Grimm way. What I appreciated most was not being pushed through the sales process faster than I wanted. Make 2021 the year you drive away in a Chevrolet, the Bob Grimm way. Lower half of Illinois public universities and recent grads earn $12,000 more than the national average. Create your legacy at Illinois State and by the Illinois Corn Growers Association. Meet the families that make up 96% of Illinois farms and learn how Illinois runs on homegrown corn at www.watchusgrow.org. We begin the second quarter. Wheaton North on the move. Facing Noah's second down and 14 in St. Rita territory for Coochie quickly. And it will be third down and 14. It was looking for Ryan Burke on that particular play. Try to get that ball to Burke right in front of Matt Kingsbury. The linebackers are two Kingsbury brothers, both stellar at owning those linebacker position. 40 and 48 for the St. Rita Mustangs. Both these schools have experienced state football championships. Wheaton North in 1979, 1981, and 1986 for St. Rita. They are the champs in 1978 and in 2006, but St. Rita was here two years ago in Class 5A, lost that ball game to Rochester. Wheaton North go back to the Kent Graham and Chuck Long days mm. storage quarterbacks in their history. This year's addition for Cucci. Plants, throws, he has a man wide open. It's Corton Hoven, shakes the tackler. He's going in. Well, there's a big play, an explosive play for a touchdown. He finds his main man, Cordenhoven. And Cordenhoven made the catch and then runs after the catch. He had Jake Lehman and was basically left in his tracks at about the five-yard line. Cordenhoven's seventh touchdown catch of the season. For Cucci's 23rd touchdown throw. Now O'Connor for the extra point attempt. Twice, Wheaton North turned away St. Rita and a couple of missed field goals on the second possession of Falcons. Bring it home this time, that touchdown pass from Fort Cucci to Kortenhoven. The celebration in the end zone for Seth Kortenhoven. Yeah, he found himself out on an island right here. They roll right, throw back against the grade. That's the arm strength, and look at that move. Put the brakes on and just cruise into the end zone. You have one-on-one -on -one coverage, no safety around to be found. Good recognition by the great throw off Mark Forcucci. Seth Kortenhoven, their go-to guy. Kortenhoven uh, played freshman football in his sophomore year, played soccer, then came back for football his junior, senior year. That's yeah, kind of crazy, and he does, he, he's got collegiate ability, he's got collegiate size at 6'2", 195, and even if he's not a speed burner, you know, I know he dropped an early ball, but he came right back and made a play there, puts his team on the board early. And go back to Forcucci again. He rolled right, and then just threw a tight ball right back against the grain. That was about a 40-yard, their 35-yard pass in the air to set up that touchdown. 
Mark Forcucci, the senior quarterback, faced through four passes on third down, completed three of them. First down and a touchdown in a 7 0 lead for the Falcons. That's a third down efficiency we talked about as one of our keys. Stay on the field. From the 10, coverage as Caleb Brown has no room to run. However, he makes his own space, powers his way forward, and St. Rita to start inside their own 30 yard line. Really good kick coverage. Two opportunities for Caleb Brown on kickoff returns where he is a danger to take it all the way. Wheaton North has done a tremendous job in that ever important third phase of the game, special teams. It was Devon Neal that got down there first to make the first contact on Brown. Brown will split out to the left. They have to find as many creative ways as they can to get Caleb Brown to football. Yeah, Top of your screen there. Switching positions in his backfield. He's going to go to the right side, to the near side. Has it complete. E.J. Nawagwu with the reception. That will be close to a first down. St. Rhea's been able to move the ball. In the first quarter, they control the ball for over eight minutes and had a six to three first down advantage, but those two missed field goals. That becomes the difference. Throw in the touchdown to Cortenhoven. 7 0, Wheaton North. Just a little hitch pattern makes this a very manageable situation. Second down and short. Their leading receiver, Nawagwu. Pressure up the middle. Yulatowski goes down. Once again, the Wheaton North defense comes up big. This time, it's yet another defensive back. Kyle Capel with the sack. So they're bringing it from all angles. Capel comes up from the corner uh, from the field boundary side and he just makes a play with speed. So you have Capel, Libby, O'Connor, and Moore, all with either a sack or a tackle for a loss. Sideline warning here on the near sideline for Wheaton North. Well, they'll back up a bit, and boy, how hard is that? You just keep creeping forward and forward. You cannot help yourself. <laughs> St. Rita faced with a third down. They're one of three to this point. Pressure from the backside. And Middleton cannot handle it. And just right now, the speed of the game of Wheaton North's defense is has Rita in a little bit of a rush, row, rush mode offensively. That's why that ball wasn't gathered in. They brought pressure from the edge once again. Milotowski had to throw that ball a little bit quicker than he wanted to. Defensive coordinator for Joe, Joe Wardinsky's team is Colin Murphy, and boy, he has had them, as you said, Mark, coming from all directions, and maybe a little bit more speed than showed up on film. St. Rita kind of back on their heels. And Wheaton North will take a timeout with 10.25 to play here in the first half and a 7 0 lead. Well, coming up in our following game, our last game, that's sad to hear. You have Maine South against Lockport. That will be your 8 8 championship ball game as we wrap up a weekend here at Northern Illinois University. You know, he seems to be hitting already, and we're only in the second quarter of this game, and I really expect some big time hitting in that 8 8 championship game. It's been quite a weekend of football here in DeKalb Husky Stadium. Menard, save big money at Menards on all your home improvement needs. Time to punt. Connor Talty to punt. Seth Cortenhoven deep. The wind at the back of Talty. A little bit of a cross breeze. Oh, beauty. Inside the 20-yard line, look to run a reverse. O'Connor ended up with the ball, and his team will go back on offense. Last time Falcons had it, this was the result. 38 yards for Cucci to Cortenhoven, a 7-0 lead with a little over 10 minutes left in the first half. It's here. 
The Menards Black Friday Sale. Hurry in for best selection. Price is good through December 5th. Give the gift of power and performance with this Master Force Boost 20-volt brushless oscillating multi-tool kit. Just $119. Plus, get a free bonus toolbox. This 22-foot aluminum multi-position ladder can be positioned in five different ways. Only $139 after rebate. Check out these and more amazing Black Friday deals at Menards. Available in store only while supplies last. We know it's difficult to decide where to invest first each year. But your farm and family depend on it. We want you to have your most successful season yet. And that's why we've cataloged over 12 million corn plants and 20,000 germinated seeds. Whether you're just beginning to monitor equipment performance or fine-tuning your equipment, our dealers are here to help. This is your year to know that you're doing the best you possibly can for your farm and your family. It's the Illinois High School Association State Football Finals, the final day of the season. It comes in week number 14. We're in our seventh of eight games, and Wheaton North has that 7 0 lead over St. Rita. Well, Wheaton North wants to run the football. Every team does, but they have enough passing attack now that Forcucci goes under center for one of the few times, which would indicate run. There it is. About three yards on the carry. Beetle got it. That's one adjustment that Wheaton North had to make. We mentioned Brayton Maskey, three year starter out. Well, he was the speed guy, and it's Beetle, a little bit more power guy. He had 145 yards and four touchdowns in the first round win over Elgin Larkin. Yeah, 185 pounds, so he can run between the tackles. It's a very solid offensive line for Wheaton North. Ran right over Stevens on that particular play. Short pickup on first down. Quickly to Kortenhoven. Banged out of bounds. He will be to the 28-yard line. Or make that the 33-yard line, we should say. I'll leave him about a yard short of a first down. St. Rita play a little bit of cat and mouse and get the four, four down lineup, but they keep bringing their linebackers up into the line of scrimmage, into the, the gap, A and B gap on either side. And then sometimes they'll bring them, put pressure on middle, middle blitz, and sometimes they'll back down into coverage. Wing North, three or four on third downs. They need a yard here for a first down. Jumping up the left side. That's the tight end, Casey Morrison. Ball, ball start. Offense. Left tackle. Five yards. Play third down. So now that third down conversion rate will be challenged a bit more on third and six. And the coaches just, they can't stand dead ball penalties. Pre-snap penalty. Cartenhoven along with Libby split wide right. Percucci to the pocket. Just overthrows his intended receiver, Casey Morrison. They dial up a blitz once again. Does St. Reed a lot of pressure from the outside. So that penalty costs the Falcons. It was interesting, they went right back to Morrison. He was the man who jumped for that five-yard penalty. And now time to punt for Tyler O'Connor. So Terry Quinn, the defensive coordinator, really mixing up his coverages and his defensive blitzes. Ball rolls dead at the 35-yard line, and that's where St. Rita will take it. To celebrate the 50th anniversary of Title IX, the IHSA is sponsoring a 50 for 50 matching gift initiative on Giving Tuesday. All proceeds from the drive will be pledged to the IHSA Foundation, which annually provides scholarships to Illinois high school students selected to be a part of the All-State Academic Team. Visit IHSA.org on November 30th for more information. Well, St. Rita has tried to get the ball to the perimeter. They've had a little bit of a ground game, but nothing to be sustaining them. They could put a man in the slot now on the left side. That would be Hall. We'll see if they try to get him the ball on in, in coverage right away. Yulotowski up 
to his line, lets him know of any changes. Single safety for Week North. Quickly to the near side. Nice catch by Caleb Brown. That ball had some zip on it. Fourth catch of the night for Brown. And you want to see it with a way to fundamentally catch a football? Look at those mm. hands. He just snapped that ball right in. Just a little square out to the boundary. Seven yard pickup and a really nice catch with those strong hands, fingers he has. And that time a little too hot and a little bit too high for Brown to handle. Boy, and if that ball had been on target, Caleb Brown would have been gone. Yeah, that is your typical RPO, run pass option. Because with a quarterback, you Latowski, see right there, he's making a decision to hand it off, or it's usually a little quick post like that, and he would have been hit full speed had that ball been on target. Third down and three. Once again, they pump. They go to Brown and make another catch. First down to the 40-yard line. Caleb Brown pulls that in in front of Jake Capel. No secrets here tonight where St. Reed is looking. 18 yards on that. They're starting to develop that little bit of chemistry. They always have it, but in tonight's game, there's a pump fake. Again, off an RPO action. Little crossing pattern on the post. He picks up 18 and moves the sticks. Five of the six completions for Ulatowski have gone to Brown. This time they'll stay on the ground. Pick up a five. You see, that's the whole adage with a run sets up the pass. Well, now a couple of completions sets up that inside run right there. A little bit of zone action. They had gone RPO fake, RPO fake. That's RPO give right there. Nice seam. And you'll take first down at five every time. Rex Kroger on the tackle to DJ Stewart. There's Caleb Brown's numbers already here in the first half. Brown was in the backfield. I'll throw it to the right side. Completion inside the 30-yard line, and that should be enough for the first down. This time he finds E.J. Nawagwu. 33rd catch of the season for Nawagwu. Now, Nawagwu, you talk about people stepping up. Both these teams have had to survive some injuries. Nawagwu really picked up his game when Brown went down in the first game of the season. And he's a deep threat as well, a track athlete. Run the 200. He can go deep ball. In the backfield, Brown. Penalty flag is down. Brown is finally down. If that's if that's a hole, they can now decline that because of that huge loss behind the sticks. Ross stands in the number 33, part of the posse that tracked down Caleb Brown. Look at that penetration. Really solid play. Just on the play, we got a hold on the offense. Number 56. That penalty has been declined. Double to Bryant. And the reason it was declined because it was a loss of 11 yards. That initial penetration, Rex Kroger, number 34, the senior linebacker, diverted Brown from his intended path. Ball pushed back to the 40. They'll get us in the Wagwu again. They get about 10 yards back. EJ Nawagwu with his third catch of the night. Already we've seen from both of these teams to the diverse offenses, how they can get you in so many different ways. Over back to back tackles, making his impact on the defense. Mustangs face with the third down and 10. Stewart in the backfield behind Ulatowski. That big offensive line in front of them. Pressure. Ulatowski flips it up in the air. The catch was made. It will be short of the first down. But Tommy Ulatowski had to get rid of it in a hurry. Watch this pressure coming hard. And once again, coming from one of the cornerbacks, one of the defensive backs, Tyler O'Connor. And that is Brown. It comes up the reception. The North folks didn't think so. It sets up a fourth down and seven. Ulatowski will be calm, cool, collected right here. No shake of this veteran quarterback. Low and incomplete. Nawagwu thought he had it. 
No, no, no. He's told, and the ball will go to Wheaton North. Well, he lays out of the turf. He came up like he had caught the football. There's the rifle of a bullet. And he might have had that within his body the whole time. Well, the official said that he was bobbling it. So I'm not sure. It was hard to see from that angle whether that ball touched the ground while it was being juggled. And what do we have once again? Wheat North giving up some yardage, but yep. not giving up any points. Falcons, we've said, what? Nine times they've held opponents to one touchdown or less. Just incredible. Their defensive consistency only give up 9.7 points per game. We talk about in the season, how about in the playoffs? Nine and a half points. So they have been consistent all throughout. St. Rita's had the ball four times, a couple of missed field goals, a punt, and now turning the ball over on downs. This time in Wheaton North Territory, the Falcons will have it. Beetle gets the initial call. We'll get about four yards. We're down under five and a half minutes to play in the first half. The only scoring tonight came early. Second play of the second quarter. That's when Seth Kortenhoven pulled in a 38-yard pass from the quarterback Mark Forcucci. Uh, St. Rita's Road, they put up 42 against Rolling Meadows, 28 against Geneva, against Hananiga, 36, and then against Prospect, 42. And have not done at the scoreboard yet tonight after those big numbers we just mentioned. Corcucci spins away, gets it to Carton Holden, he shakes him in. Carton Holden to the 15 to the 40, left sideline, pushed out of bounds. Another big connection from Corcucci to Carton Holden. Boy, he hit Carton Holden right as he made that turn in to come back to the boundary for 41 yards. Watch, he turns, and there's the ball. Really good spin move on the inside. He did that at his last touch for a touchdown. And this one he turns into explosive play. And it took B.J. Hall to chase him down to knock him out of bounds to prevent six. First down for the 29. Already 85 yards on four catches for Seth Kortenhoven, including a touchdown. We North play with a great deal of confidence and savvy right now. They better hurry. But instead, they'll say we'll take a timeout as that play clock was winding down. 444 to play in the first half. It's a good one in your 7A matchup. The NFHS Learning Center is the leader in online education for the interscholastic community. At NFHSLearn.com, you can find over 70 courses, including more than 30 free courses, such as concussion in sports, heat illness prevention, sudden cardiac arrest, and protecting students from abuse. To learn more, visit the NFHS Learning Center. Driving with a 7 0 lead. Did you know Illinois State University's total cost is in the lower half of Illinois Public Universities, and recent grads earn $12,000 more than the national average? Create your legacy at Illinois State. Falcons come into this football game averaging 146 on the ground, 170, or excuse me, 146 near, 174 on the ground. So, really good balance, and they've demonstrated that tonight in the first half. Play action for Cucci, wide open, Morris, and touchdown! 29 yards for Cucci to Casey Morrison, and a 13 and nothing lead. They set this one up with a play action, really good throw back again against the grain. A lot of the flow went to the right, and all by his lonesome. It must have felt like it took forever to get to it, but it certainly did. 
Casey Morrison at 6'3", 220 senior. He'll remember that one for a long time. And pitch and catch doesn't get much easier than that as they extend their lead. Lead extended by one more point, 14 to nothing with 439 to play in the first half. How good has Forcucci been? I mean, he has really distributed the ball. And how about his play fake there? I mean, the entire flow of the St. Rita defense went for that play fake. He rolled out. That's the second time we've seen him roll right and throw strikes back to his left. We talked about his arm strength. He certainly has demonstrated that. Well, a lot of congratulations for that young man on the sideline. Casey Morrison, the touchdown reception. You, know, you talk about the play fake from Forcucci. How about the play fake to Luke Beadle? That's who everybody in the yeah. building, in fact, including the entire defense for St. Rita, thought Beadle had it. Morrison had two touchdowns in the semis, so he knows how to hit Pater and come out well in the playoffs. Just a little bit of a go route there. Three plays, 74 yards, and only took 58 seconds for Wheaton North. They turned away St. Rita on downs, and Mark Forcucci having a game here in the first half. Yeah, seven out of 12, and had a couple drops, to be honest with you, early on. Calvin Lee is in trouble. He goes backwards. Well, we've seen in the first half the speed, not only of the defense, for Wheaton North, but their special teams as well. Their special teams have been dominant. Their kick coverage has really put St. Rita in a hole. And you would think that St. Rita with Caleb Brown back there would be pretty dangerous with their kick return game. But no, look at one, two, three, four blue shirts. More hats to the party. Bring them on. Special teams make a contribution. That means the Mustangs will have to start from their own 12-yard line. Four and a half to play in the first half. To the near side, not much field to work with. B.J. Hall has run out of bounds. There's number eight, Jake Capel. We've called his name a few times. How about the secondary for Wheaton North? They have been all over this field. There's Capel fighting off a block. Make sure Hall has nowhere to go. Just a little bit of a jet sweep right there. Tried to get to the edge and square it off, but too much defense right now. Speed laterally right now. Wheaton North just sh showing and getting it done. Gain of only a yard. Ulatowski wide open. They left Brown free. Now Caleb Brown will get to a block to the outside. Brown steps out of bounds to slow down the drama. I love the Hall of Fame call of Dave Bernhardt, my partner, because he sees Caleb Brown with that touch, and you start to get excited. You start to get excited because you know something special certainly can happen anytime that young man touches the football. All the way to the 44-yard line. 31-yard pass completion to Brown. Ulatowski to the air again. To midfield. Caleb Brown again. You know where the ball is going. Every once in a while, E.J. Nawagwu may have a look, but it's number three on the receiving end of yet another Utilitowski pass. Well, they went with a bunch set triangle, if you will, to the near side, the boundary side of the field as we sort out this penalty on the field. That one is going to come back. We have a hold. Offense. Number 72. That's 10 yards from the spot. We'll replay it. Fourth penalty against St. Rita will take that ball away from midfield and they will walk it all the way back to the 29, 10 yards from the spot of the foul. So a 21 yard difference in a completion and a penalty. Top of your screen, they go to the same bunch set they went to on the previous play. That's where Ulatowski's looking. Patience, nothing there. He'll go deep, a lot of air under that ball and never really had a chance. He was looking at Kelvin Lee. Ulatowski did a good job extending that play. What happened there? They went with that bunch set. He checked down, checked down, nothing, nothing. Then the play broke down and it was complete improv by the receivers and him. Receivers know once the thing 
the, the first pattern breaks down to come back to the football. And usually what's what it's called in a bunch set is one guy is told on a break, you go deep, one guy's told to come back to the ball. One guy's told to go to the middle. So that's usually predetermined by coaches on breakdown plays. Second and 25, low screen to the left side of Middleton. Middleton hit and dropped after a short gain. There's number 42, Fred Elfman. Elfman, 12 tackles for loss. That one was positive yardage. Also got help from Trent Gabriel. Elfman's a high octane energy guy, but you know what? Everybody on their defense is. This defense has been all that we anticipated it might be. Gave up 27 points to Brother Rice. You may say, well, that's a lot. Yeah. Brother Rice will averaging about 50 points per game. All right, two safeties right now for Wheaton North. Glutowski, long throw to the sideline, incomplete. He was looking for E.J. Nwagwu. And double coverage back there for Wheaton North, being right where they belong. Capel's back there. Kroger's back there. Thus, there was a very, very small window for Ulitowski to try to fit that ball into. So the penalty ends up costing St. Rita. They will have to punt once again. Wheaton North will get the ball with just under three minutes to play in the first half and a 14 0 lead. Tyler O'Connor back to receive the second punt of the night off of the foot of Connor Talty. Talty, a great kick the first time, another good one here. And here comes O'Connor. Great speed. Big hit. Oh, my goodness. It was Matt Kingsbury that labeled Tyler O'Connor. 6 4, 220. Mm. Kaboom. In the open field. And he led with his shoulder, which is a very, very clean hit. You can feel that crush up here. Matt Kingsbury on special teams. He'll stay on the field. Part of a linebacking core, including a couple of twins, his twin Joe Kingsbury. And little brother James on the offensive side. So three Kingsburys. Don't get confused at home. Yes, there's three of them. Two juniors and a freshman. Wheaton North looking for more. Looking for big. Carton Hoven behind his man. Seth Carton Hoven will pull it in at the 12 yard line. Once again. Oh my goodness, what a well thrown ball. And he got that ball right in that window between Schmidt and Layton. 49 yards on the home run ball. They're knocking at the door late in the half. And Wheaton North gets the ball to start the second half as well. Huge, huge play here. How about that concentration from Kortenhoven? Had defenders on either side, saw it all the way in. 6 2. He needed that one big time. Five catches, 134 yards for Kortenhoven. You know, he dropped, what, one, maybe two early on, but everything else has been superlative. The play clock was winding down. The timeout will need to be called. That's the final timeout of this half for Wheaton North, and it comes with 2.16 to play and a 14-0 lead. Well, there's Corton Hoven's numbers. That, uh, that, this, by the way, is for the first half, folks. <laughs> Five catches, 134 yards, and a touchdown, and every single one of those catches have been big plays at big moments. I think Forcucci knows where he's at all the time. What great symmetry between quarterback and receiver. It's hard to believe he took a year off football, isn't it? <laughs> My goodness. Uh, Mark Forcucci delivering it, three-year starter, the Duquesne Conference Offensive Player of the Year. He has made all types of throws tonight, and there's for Cucci's numbers. Eight of 13, a couple of touchdowns. Those are the two scores on the board. For Cucci, a three-year starter, and he has full command of this offense and his team. A little pitch. St. Rita, great job in stretching that one out as Cardenhoven grabbed that one. And that may be about a loss of half a yard on that play. To try to get him a touch any which way. A little reverse. Strong element's too slow to develop. 
He was slowed up by Matt Kingsbury, and then Johnny Schmidt turned him in. Johnny Schmidt among their leading tacklers. They see Wheaton North, great clock management now. They're out of timeouts. It doesn't matter to them. They, they'd like to leave St. Rita no time on the scoreboard for them to get the ball back. Martin Hovind comes through again. This time he'll stop, reverse direction, and they'll go on a play action. Forcucci dragged down. Well, they'll say Forcucci was down back at the 26-yard line. Now, Forcucci has seen some pressure, but that's the first time they've really gotten to him. A little fake handoff and almost unblocked coming in to grit that sack and staying with the play the entire time was Pat Farrell, a defensive lineman, coming off the inside first sack for St. Rita for the night. Could have come at a better time. Second leading sack master Pat Farrell picks up his fifth of the season. Second down and 23. Gucci sat again back to back as the Mustangs coming up big and the same main man on sack number six back to back sack for Farrell. How about that? Kaboom from the back side, the blind side, if you will. A huge defensive stand here for St. Rita as now Wheaton North out of field goal range on back to back sacks. The two sacks after it looked like Wheaton North had plenty of time to stick the ball into the end zone. This one will go to the end zone. Fourth down and 30. Sack number three. The Mustangs defense dialing it up. Matt Kingsbury with the sack. Matt Kingsbury just with a bull rush, if you will, right there. Look, he fought through three different people to make that play. 93 total tackles for him, four sacks on the season, along with another three TFLs. And he is juiced right there. In front, okay. Wheaton North had the ball all the way down to the 13-yard line. And after three consecutive sacks, St. Rita will have two seconds. The ball is at the 40. So they went backwards 27 yards, which is going to skew their really solid first half offensive numbers. Coming up the half, we have highlight stats. I have the Menards game summary, and Mark will revisit his keys to the game. Final play of the half, Yulatowski trying to create. He drops this one. Loose on the field. Picked up. He extends, he extends. He wants to throw this one as far as he can and just hail Mary, see what happens. But the ball's on the on the ground scoop and score. It certainly is right there is Gabriel to get the job done. He just dropped it. He was under pressure from Joe Barna, but Gabriel, the right man in the right spot at the right time. And with no time remaining. In a stunning turn of events, Wheaton North takes a 21 0 lead into the locker room. All I can say is that is wow. That was quite an incredible finish at the half. They got down to the 13 yard line, went negative 27 yards, and then they get the scoop and score anyway. 21 0. There's one happy coach in the field. That's Joe Wardinsky standing by with Donnie Tillman. All right, thanks, guys. Uh, I don't know if you draw it up like that, but uh, a couple of crazy plays there in the half. Yeah, absolutely. We had it down in the red zone, and we were trying to punch one in there right before the half, and then we, you know, we didn't manage the clock real well and turned it over on downs, and then we got a fortunate play right there and scored on the last play of the half. If the team's going to give you six points, you'll take it, right? Absolutely, absolutely. The kids are playing hard. Um, you know, we, we haven't... Uh, Completed as many as we would like to this point, but the defense is doing a good job of keeping points off the board. All right, coach, good luck in the second half. Appreciate it. Thank you. All right, send it back up to you guys. What a way to close out the first half. St. Rita with a defensive stand, only to see this on the final play. Picked up by Trent Gabriel. 28 yards later, it's 21 to nothing. Halftime here in your 7A title game.
Leaving the house. Not easy. When you need health care that's easy, you need OSF On-Call Urgent Care. When and where you need it, in person or online, OSF On-Call Urgent Care. The innocence of youth. Is there anything any better? But soon they'll be in high school and facing all the same challenges you faced. How to make friends. How to fit in. How to be cool. We want our children to have everything they'll need to live fulfilling and productive lives. Make sure the kids in your family are among the more than 12 million participants in America who take part in high school sports or activities. We're there to serve, make sure we're creating a fair atmosphere for both teams, upholding the integrity of the game. I chose to be an official. It's the best decision I've made. In life, things aren't scripted. Games aren't pre-scripted. You know, I got into officiating because my father was an official. Officiating was part of our family life. It wasn't just the game. You get to be outside, you get to like experience the game. It's so much more fun. You can get a lot out of it. If you're an athlete, we need people like you and translate those skills to officiating. It helped me become not only a better official, but a better person. It happens in every town, in every game. We never have a perfect game, but the rewards always outweigh the negativities. And it's just been wonderful. Roommates, not easy. When you need health care that's easy, you need OSF On-Call Urgent Care. In person or online, OSF On-Call Urgent Care. Back at Husky Stadium, your Class 7A state championship. A stunner here at halftime. Wheaton North, 21 to nothing over St. Rita. Glad you've joined us for this one. A lot of action here at Husky Stadium. I'm Dave Fernandez. This is my longtime partner, Mark Lindo. And Mark, I need you to bail me out on this one because I'm supposed to come up with some thoughts. My thought is, wow. Yeah, that's what I said. What a incredible finish to that half. You thought it was 14-0 Wheaton North. A Hail Mary opportunity for St. Rita. Ball goes to the turf. Scoop and score completely changes the complexion of this football game. And the Falcons up 21-0, and they're going to touch the football first in the second half. You, you talk about momentum? Wow. Well, you know, I thought it was St. Rita that had the momentum. You talk about three consecutive sacks for a loss of yards of 27 yards. They're in business. One big play to a big play man, and instead it flips the other way. Well, it's just an incredible football game. A Wheaton North's defense has been everything that's advertised we've mentioned it twice averaging uh, defensively giving up less than 10 points a game and they got a really really solid and sometimes explosive uh, offensive St. Rita zero points up on the board let's take a look back at Mark's keys to the game we talked about them before how do they look here at halftime well it looks like uh, we had three keys a game control the clock and Wheaton North has been able to do that 11 minutes and 37 seconds. St. Rita's had a little bit longer at 13.23, which just doesn't jive with that. But third down conversions, two out of eight for St. Rita. That doesn't get it done. Three out of six for Wheaton North. There, that, that advantage and turnover margin we thought would be really important. There's only been one in this game, but seven points up on the board because of that turnover on the last play of the first half. So a 14 nothing game looked like it could become 21 one to nothing would look like it could become 14 to nothing halftime which becomes 21 to nothing in a stunning way to finish that first half well we've had great action all day folks who were around for the 6a game saw Kerry Grove knock off East St. Louis in a one-point thriller and here we've got something special brewing as well Mark, thanks a lot. I'll tell you what, this is exciting. Again, we thought it was going to be this way, but not quite this way. And I'm, I concur with you. All. One word, one adjective. Wow, is all you can say. Wheaton, the defense, really tells a story. Keeping St. Rita off the board. They've done an admirable job. Great scheme. Passionate play on the field for Wheaton right now. Uh, on both sides of the ball, really getting it done. But that defensive unit, keeping St. Rita off the board, really said something. And uh, St. Rita going back to the locker room, having to figure things out. Out, keeping spirits high they've had opportunities but they can't cash in especially their field goal kicker you got to talk about building confidence again get them on the field maybe get them a short one build up that confidence
confidence. They may need him come fourth quarter if they can get something together to uh, get back in this ball game. But right now for Wheaton, keep the pressure on. And I tell you what, they had to go in that locker room loaded with enthusiasm and motivation after the way this first half ended. We're going to take a short break here at Husky Stadium. Again, you're watching the Class 7A championship game. Right now, the Falcons of Wheaton North leading St. Rita Mustangs 21 to zip. We'll have much more as the IHSA state championships continue here in DeKalb. Your car is more than just transportation. It's a gathering place. Your mobile community. At CEFQ, we get that. So we offer car loans with great rates, flexible terms, and no hidden fees. We work with you to get the loan you need for the vehicle you want. Because getting there together is better than going it alone. CEFQ, not a bank. Better. And once again, welcome back to Husky Stadium here in DeKalb. Again, Class 7A Championship. We're at halftime right now. Wheaton leading St. Rita 21 to zip. And as we just talked about, Donnie Tillman is joining me. I see a field goal kicker on the field, Donnie. Yeah, you know what? When you miss a couple out there, Tony, you might need to get out there and practice till you get it right. So as we talked about, you don't really need to hear everything that's going on in the uh, locker room right now. What you need to do is get your mind right and get those kicks in between the goals. That's Connor Tolte. He missed two in the first quarter, kept St. Rita off the board, uh, and he was 8 of 8 coming into this matchup in mm -hmm. field goals, and he misses his first two opportunities in a state championship game. You talk about confidence, you have to have it as a field goal kicker. Hopefully, he can get things together in that second half. They're definitely going to need it, and you know what? They're going to need some points as well because they had an opportunity to really kind of uh, quiet the storm so to speak i mean the last six plays of that first half we get a long play we get four straight sacks and then we get a scoop six it was incredible the defense coming up strong i tell you what we you have to say something about the scheme they've drawn up to keep an offense like st rita off the board definitely bend but don't break yeah. i mean they allow st rita to go down the field but when it came to getting inside the red zone they would deny them every time and that's the indication on the scoreboard right now, now. if you're Wheaton, you want to keep the pressure on if you're the head coach what are you telling the falcons right now i think you just want to keep it going right now. Just play your game. Don't make any, any mistakes. Don't allow them to have any uh, charity point to get back into this contest right now you just want to keep things simple stick to your game plan and hopefully things work out in the end keep it simple and hold on we'll find out if that is indeed the prescription that uh, the Falcons will be following come second half it's time for our Menards game summary right now you see the first downs right about even nine to seven St. Rita leading in that category rushing yards St. Rita leading 57 minus 13 for the Falcons of Wheaton North passing yards though 145 to 186 Wheaton leading in that area I'll tell you what Wheaton has been able to hit a couple of big plays to really stretch that St. Rita defense and we're able to put some points on the scoreboard. And look at the total yards there. St. Rita leading 202 to 173. You see the third down conversions. Wheaton North 3 of 6 while St. Rita just 2 of 8. Again, that's not going to help you on the scoreboard at all, especially now that time is not in your favor. Even though time of possession is in St. Rita's favor in the first half, you know, the clock's
clock's going to be ticking. They need to score some points in the second half. It's going to be interesting to see how St. Rita gets that offense moving, got to build that confidence up, because the second half could tell the story. There's a state championship on the line here in Class 7A. We're going to take another short break here in DeKalb. Don't go away. More exciting high school football is on the way right here on the IHS, IHSA Network. At Illinois State University, our legacy is one of preparing students to create, to explore, to lead, to make an impact. Our students graduate on time, find success in their field, and make a difference in the world. That's our legacy. What will yours be? Create your legacy at Illinois State University. There's more here than meets the eye. Corn is in the food that nourishes us. It's in the medicine and vitamins and other products that sustain us. It's in the daily essentials that help us navigate and create in the world. It's renewable and sustainable, better for our world and our future. Corn is all this and more. And the best part? It's homegrown by local farm families right here in Illinois. here. The Menards Black Friday Sale. Hurry in for best selection. Price is good through December 5th. Power all of your devices with this 30-pack of double or triple A batteries. They're just $3.98 after rebate. A bath set is the perfect gift to give this holiday season. These Dove Men's and Axe bath sets are just $7.97 each. Check out these and more amazing Black Friday deals at Menards. Available in store only while supplies last. We know it's difficult to decide where to invest first each year. But your farm and family depend on it. We want you to have your most successful season yet. And that's why we've cataloged over 12 million corn plants and 20,000 germinating seeds. Whether you're just beginning to monitor equipment performance or fine-tuning your equipment, our dealers are here to help. This is your year to know that you're doing the best you possibly can for your farm and your family. And once again, welcome back to DeKalb. We're at halftime here in the Class 7A State Championship. Wheaton North, the Falcons leading St. Rita 21 to zip right now. It's going to be an exciting second half. Everybody's gearing up. The fans are pretty excited. Bands are on the field. We've got field goal kickers are warming up, trying to get their, uh, you know, mojo back for St. Rita right now. It's going to be interesting to see how things materialize here in the second half for the Mustangs. Again, a very high-powered offense, a team that can get up and down the field, put scores, uh, put points on the board, but they've, held, they've been held shut out right now. Let's take a look at some of the first half highlights right now. That's uh, Seth Cordenhagen with the touchdown here coming up. It's a 23-yard touchdown pass to get Wheaton on the board in the second quarter. And then a 29-yard touchdown catch right here by Casey Morrison, number nine, getting the job, job done for Gucci. Uh, making great passes here, but don't wait a minute. Just when you thought we were going to close it out at 14 zip, here comes a big turnover, a scoop and score by Wheaton's Trent Gabriel, the five foot seven senior linebacker. Look what I found. He is in the end zone from 20 yard, 28 yards out, and we have a 21 point lead for Wheaton North at halftime in the state championship game against the Mustangs of St. Rita. Wheaton fans, well, they're pretty excited. They have a right to be, but there's a lot more football coming up in the second half here in DeKalb at Husky Stadium. Hope you're enjoying your holiday weekend with your family and enjoying joining us and watching some exciting high school football compliments of the IHSA. We're going to take a short break. We come back. More analysis and more uh, insight headed your way. Don't go away. Together, we made it through one of the most challenging years in our lives. Together, we helped our schools and students achieve great things. We all partnered and struggled and overcame together. Because we know, together, we can do great things. Now, we aim to be better than ever. 
We are IEA, the Illinois Education Association, and we all are stronger together. What rhymes with great? Participate. Where does greatness start? Here, in the classroom. On the stage. In the pool. On the field. Where will your greatness take you? To better grades. To more friends. Be great. This broadcast is copyrighted by the IHSA, the NFHS Network, and Gray Media Group Incorporated. Any other use of this broadcast or internet stream without the express written consent of the IHSA, the NFHS Network, and Gray Media Group Incorporated is strictly prohibited. Both teams back on the field here at Brigham Field. Husky Stadium, the site of the IHSA Class 7A state championship. There's your halftime score, Wheaton North 21 nothing. How did Wheaton North get to 21? Let's look back one more time at this fumble recovery for a score from 28 yards out. Boy, Mark. it's a game changer, no doubt about this. There's the scramble and the pursuit of the football. And there's the hit. Barna with the hit. Nabala with a block. And Trent Gabriel with the touchdown. So three different Falcons were a part of Gabriel's touchdown scoop and score. It took two of his teammates to help make that play as well. That is team football, complimentary football. And, you know, Gabriel's going to be the one everybody talks about getting the touchdown. His other two teammates were a big, big part of that play. Donnie Tillman's on the field. Todd Kuska's alongside. All right, I'm joined here by the head coach for St. Rita. Coach, uh, what did you tell your team at halftime? Well, I told them just, you know, it doesn't look right, it doesn't look good right now, you know, but keep believing. We got to this point because we believed in each other. You know, things haven't looked great for us at, at different times in the season, and we stuck together and, and pulled it through. You know, we, 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 uh, we're a four-quarter football team, and, you know, I said this is going to be our half now. We gave them their half, now it's on time for our half. You were able to make a few defensive stops, at, you know, at the end of the first half, but... A costly turnover obviously uh, hurt you on the scoreboard. Now you have to go uh, get those back, right? No doubt. Yeah, that's it. And, but we've been there for each other all year long. Offense, defense. So, you know, defense will get us the ball back right here. We get some points on. You know, and there's no play that's worth 21. So it's one play at a time, one score at a time, and we'll climb back into the game. All right. Good luck in the second half, Coach. Appreciate it. Thanks. All right. Back to you. That's a very confident head coach and Todd Kuska. And, you know, one thing you can do, Mark, is at halftime pick up the stat sheet. It will show his team, the Mustangs from St. Rita, have run 13 more plays. They picked up 12 more yards in total offense. They have 62 more yards rushing. But yet the other side, as you look at a scoreboard, you're down 21. That's crazy. Yeah, you look at those numbers, it just doesn't make sense. That's why football is such a unique game. But you're right, he can point out some positives to his team. And his calm demeanor right there, Coach Kuska, very impressive to me because his team will feed off that. If he goes in and does not have that air of confidence, does not convince his football team it's a four-quarter game, and to make this next play, their obvious uh, goal right now is to get a three and out, get the football back. 21 points on the scoreboard, but the zero on the other side. Big defensive effort tonight from Wheaton North. Great pursuit. We have seen the cornerbacks all night long. Coming up, the speed of this defense has been something we didn't quite expect. Well, defensively, you can't do any better than Wheaton North did in the first half. And, you know, they made play after play, no doubt about it. Look at how many hats get to the football every time. You just see a swarming bunch of Falcons flying to the football. So it's 21 nothing as we get set start second half. Joe Wardinsky is in his 14th season as the head coach of Wheaton North. And there was a stretch there starting in 2014 that the Falcons had four seasons out of five where they finished four and five. But it was a five and one spring, a very important spring for Wheaton North. And here they are, 12 and one and two quarters away from claiming a state championship. And for Wheaton North, it would be its fourth in school history in the first since 1986. You talk about Coach Wardinsky, he did indeed have championship opportunities, a decent defensive quarter at Wheaton Warrenville South earlier in his career. So he has been through this kind of situation in his coaching career, which has allowed him to have an opportunity to bring his own team here to DeKalb and 
right now through the first half of this football game position to win a state championship but a lot of football left to be played ball security even more important right now for Wheaton North there's Mark Farcucci wearing that number five in a blue jersey big first half couple of touchdown passes starting from their own 20 starting on the ground a cutback from Beadle Luke Beadle will get yardage 15 yards on first down as we start the second half see this junior come through the line watch both hands over the football right there what a great shot that is the lane opening up but ball protection ball security both arms around the football if they can use any kind of clock here in the second half and play mistake free football from a turnover standpoint they'll be able to finish this longest run of the game for the Falcons on the first play from scrimmage in the second half 15 yards Marcucci spinning. He'll hang on to it. We got about two, three yards. Cutting back. You just saw Todd Kuska moments ago, the head coach for St. Rita. A St. Rita grad, 1990 grad, played his, high, or his college football, St. Xavier. He began that and was going well, but a foot injury then turned him into coaching. And all that he's done since then is, Mark mentioned earlier, a Hall of Fame career. He was the National Coach of the Year in 2009. He has a son, Joey, that's playing on this team here in the state title ball game. He sent 190 players out to play college football. And 75 of them Division I. That is amazing in 25 years. Parcucci hit as he throws, lays it out there. And once again, the catch is made. Seth Gordon Holman has pulled in anything that has been remotely near him. Are you kidding me? The circus is in town because that was a circus catch. Little play action pass right there. Hitch and go. High point the football right there. Go up and get it. Snatch it down. 26. And they move the chains. Another explosive play for the Falcons. What a great catch. There was nothing B.J. Hall could do. Forcucci just dropped it in there. Mark Forcucci has been on the money tonight. And Seth Kortenhoven has 160 yards receiving. Had two inches on Hall on that. He used every bit of it to go up and snatch that football. Beetle again. He fakes a cutback. Had a man shoot past him, and he will get about four or five yards on first down. Adrian Hibble, Sam Hauser, and Matt Ravasek all doing a nice job blocking right there and they're reading it with good vision. Really nice first down run once again. We've seen the playbook open tonight for the Falcons. And that man right there has engineered it perfectly. Looking to build on a 21 0 lead. First possession of the second half. Beetle gets a good block on the outside. Luke Beetle still his feet. The 25 20. He'll get down to the 15. And then Beetle made the contact against BJ Hall. He said, I'm not going to let you hit me. I'm going to force the contact first after a nice pickup. Nice seal block on the inside. Really good block by Hibble and by Fontenopolis. Springing that run. However, this is going to come back. Holding call will back it up, and that block out front was Greg Fotonopoulos, the 6'5", 295-pounder. Didn't know whether he would be able to play tonight. He had just gotten cleared to play after being injured in week six. Just got cleared to play this previous Saturday. It's interesting in that week six game. How about this? How would you like to be Wheaton North? Your starting right tackle at 295 pounds. Your three-year starter at running back, Brayton Maskey. Both of those players injured in the same game. Not a good week. Yet here they are. More flags thrown. And ball. Ball starts on the offense. Left guard. Five yards. Replay. Second down. Third penalty, second in succession for Wheaton North, and it is backed them up. They were deep into St. Rita territory. Boy, how good has number five right there on your screen, Mark Forcucci, been tonight? I mean, he has played a complete game. 
His numbers are good, but his leadership even better. Play is college football at Holy Cross. Runs away from pressure, gets hit as he throws. He gets a complete to Casey Morrison. Morrison gets to the 33-yard line. Morrison has a touchdown catch tonight. His was his second of the game. 29 yards on the touchdown catch, 14 yards on that reception. Nice when you have a tight end, 6'3", about 220, that knows how to free himself on the boundary, then puts a little bit of hit on the DB right there. You know, he, know, he said, okay, I'm going to get my money's worth right there. Nice pitch and catch to the tight end. A nice weapon for an offense. Back to now a third and five as Forcucci's up to 226 yards, 67% completion percentage. Looking for more. Once again, he is hit as he lets go of the ball. Forcucci has taken some big time hits, all legal hits. He's flushed out quickly here. He had to deliver that ball off his back foot way quicker than he would have wanted to. The route was not able to be completed as he went to the turf to try to get that by Kortenhoven. Fourth down and five, and this is reminiscent of the St. Rita defense that had three consecutive sacks coming hard, and they'll come hard right here. Watch number four, top of your screen. He's the go-to guy. Will he get double coverage? And a quick little kick as Porcucci looking to get the bounce and it stays in. How about that? Mark Porcucci, the little punch kick, and everything is coming up roses for Wheaton North. Look at that play getting down the field. Cornholman, who is lined up. What a way to contribute right there. Look at every part of the body and the ball is in the end zone. I mean, it is in free play. Good job by the official down there. Coach Wojcicki likes it. Look at no motion on his face whatsoever. That ball is inches from the goal line. 11 players are standing in the end zone on the snap. A yard, maybe a yard and a half. E.J. Stewart was in charge of moving that ball out. Ooh, he got hit in the backfield as he fought through a tackle attempt by Jackson Moore. James Kingsbury, the freshman lead blocker of a fullback position. Not too much room to operate. Again, looking to get out of this predicament. Pressure on Ulatowski. They are coming from all directions. That time it's Kyle Capel. And you called his name with pressure a few times. That young man has great instincts getting off the football. Defense is going to watch the football. He just said, look, he comes in unblocked. So a breakdown by St. Rita's offensive line here. You have to account for every person. Tommy Ulatowski halfway deep in his own end zone. Retreats. Goes deep, right sideline. Too much for Nawagwu. So the punt sets up a three and out. 8.02 to play in the third quarter. St. Rita will have to kick it from their end zone. Incredible and relentless pressure by this Falcon defense. They can rush four, but they have gone from every angle putting pressure on the corner, on the quarterback with their corners. Their blitz package has been outstanding. There's Connor Talty, his heels about a foot away on the back of the end zone. He's had a couple of good punts here tonight. He gets the good snap. He gets it away, and he's got another beauty. Kortenhoven has to retreat. Stays on his feet. And Kortenhoven will be dragged down. Well, just to give you an idea, Gordon Hovind went down at about the 36-yard line of Wheaton North. However, he was standing at the 40-yard line of St. Rita when that ball was kicked. Number four has been big tonight. So is Wheaton North, 21-0 here in the third.
Other dealers want to tell you why to buy from them. At Bob Grimm Chevrolet, we want our customers, like Dave, to share the day they experienced the Bob Grimm way. Everyone at the dealership was friendly and professional. A great experience from start to finish. Make 2021 the year you drive away in a Chevrolet the Bob Grimm way. Great careers begin with Nika and the IBEW. Nika and the IBEW's 23,000 square foot training facility gives you real world practical experience. Earn as you learn as an electrical apprentice. You'll receive both the classroom and the hands-on training you need to succeed. My education is being paid for and I'll have zero college debt. Healthcare, a great pension. You really can't do better than working in the electrical trade. Make this the last job application you will ever need to fill out. Apply now for the electrical apprenticeship. Nika and IBEW Local 34. Hi, John Coker of Builders Warehouse. These are some of the cabinets I have in stock and ready for immediate pickup. An unfinished, a slate gray, or white? Get it done at Builders Warehouse on Southwest Washington Street or online at bwpure.net. That's the Cheswick Practice Center here at Northern Illinois University, and what a treat it is for the players that come here to Northern Illinois They're for the state finals. And indoor field they can split it up and have two teams warm up at the same time what a great facility for these people on first down it'll be about three yards playing with a 21 to nothing lead Luke Beadle he gets that first call Beadle had a couple of big runs had one big run called back by way of penalty in the last possession yeah they've done just enough offensively Two touchdowns by the offense, one by special teams, and then the defense has done the rest. St. Rita put up 42 against Prospect to get here, but can't get the scoreboard thus far against Wheaton North. Wheaton North's offense has a chance to really take command of this game on this drive. Take the long time, take that play clock down underneath 10 seconds. Results in the handoff, a great penetration in the backfield. Again, they are coming. That time is Giuseppe Ursetta. Ursetta, six foot, 240 pound senior. He gets that stick on Beadle. He was blocked, but he just fought off that block. Paul Coppert's defensive tackle in his own right just won that one on one matchup. We talk about team matchups, we talk about individual matchups, whether it's tackle against defensive end or, you know, what, what have you. Linebacker against running back, all individual matchups lead to what is a successful or unsuccessful play. Falcons three of seven on third down. They're looking to third down and eight here. For Kochi out of the pocket. He's able to plant, throw, lost double coverage, and picked off at the 32-yard line. The interception by Jake Lettinen across midfield. And St. Rita's in business. <laughs> Only the fourth interception of the season of a Mark Farcucci pass. Jake Lutton and the senior. He'll get this pick into double coverage. Yeah, he just playing center field, corner, safety over the top, balls up there a long time, made a great break on the football, and then flipped the field with a nice run after the interception. 31 yards after that. So they flip the field, they get the football back and they grabbed a little bit of momentum. And if there is a must-score situation for St. Rita, it's this one. And yes, I know the scoreboard, it seems obvious, but you have to take advantage of the turnover and the momentum. You got your fans involved for the first time. Great field position here after that interception. Yulatowski will float it out there. In space is a Wagwu. Not much room to go after the reception. E.J. Nawagwu, we've seen a little bit more of him recently. We've not heard much from Caleb Brown. Caden Libby's going to make this stop coming in on your screen. Right there, the slowdown. And then 11 comes right there to make the tackle. But a pretty good first down pickup. Fourth catch for Nawagwu. This time, Brown does have it. Cuts back. There's Caleb Brown, and there's a first down to the 18-yard line. Any way to get him more touches. I don't have a magic number, as you see number three on your screen. I don't have a magic number. Coach Kuska probably does, but I think he's got to touch it. They put him in a running back there. He's got to touch it another 12 to 15 times in this football game, I would think, and be part of their modus operandi. He'll get it again to the outside, to the 15 of the spin, to the 10. 
The Mustangs in scoring territory at the eight yard line. Six foot 195 and strong. Kicks that ball to the outside. Makes one man miss, just bumps off him. First and goal now. But he is exciting on every touch. Brown once again will line up behind Ulatowski. First down and goal from the eighth. Good adjustment. Give your all everything as many opportunities as you can. Ulatowski slings it here in the near side. B.J. Hall shakes one, shakes two to the five-yard line. Tackle made by Tyler O'Connor. Ulatowski, watch him drop down to make this throw. High snap, and he almost sidearms that ball, but he gets the ball out to Hall, where a playmaker can use his speed, try to get be creative, and find the end zone. May have been Fred Elfman to provide pressure up the middle. And there was some movement. Ball start. Twenty offense. Go. Five yards. Good play. Getting a little bit jumpy here. Four minutes to play in the third quarter. St. Rita looking for his first score. On the right side of the line. Early flinch. Indicative of the fact that both the right guard and right tackle were about to pull the leading block to the left. Brown with 117 yards in the air, another 22 on the ground. This time he has split out. Yulatowski looking to do it to speed to the 10, to the 5, to the pylon, and in. Tommy Yulatowski. With the 10 yard touchdown run, the must score possession became a score, Mark. Coming right at you. There's a, he looks to his left, nothing there, decides to tuck it underneath, knows where the pylon's at. Watch him vertical the football over the goal line, break that plane, and that's a winning quarterback with a winning kind of play at a needed time as they parlay that interception into points at a most crucial time for St. Rita. They answer the bell. Big extra point attempt coming up. Connor Talty, a couple of missed field goals. However, this year, 49 of 50 in extra points. Bangs it off the left upright. And that's the feeling of St. Rita fans. Connor Talty cannot believe it. His team gets six, but they cannot get seven. Here's the kick. Stun. But St. Rita able to take advantage of the interception. The quarterback, Tommy Ulatowski, he'll take it himself, looking for that corner. That's six. High school sports fans, relive your favorite moments. Just click the shopping cart below the video player to get your digital copy today. set up a five play 37 yard drive that took two minutes and 30 seconds kept up by quarterback Tommy Ulatowski's 10 yard touchdown run the extra point was missed but the Mustangs are on the board great drive by the Mustangs to, to answer they needed to take advantage of that turnover they certainly did Ulatowski just a five five player such great leadership skills he would not let his team 
not make a run here. Palti, great angle on that kick. Picked up at the 10. Libby. The best he can do, and it was a hard fought return, is to the 17 yard line. Caden Libby on the return. Start off a little bit ugly with a little bit of fumble, and then look at all the white shirts staying in their lanes, making plays on special teams. Three or four guys, hats to the football. St. Rita's got a little bit of juice. Meet the families that make up 96% of Illinois farms and learn how Illinois runs on homegrown corn at www.watchusgrow.org. You know, Wheaton North has, we're told, eight or nine guys that will play basketball and about ten guys that will wrestle starting next week. And football coaches overall, they love wrestlers. And the reason they love wrestlers is wrestlers are out there one-on-one. -on -one. We talk about one-on-one -on -one matchups, you're exposed as a wrestler, and football can expose you at times as well. That's why coaches love to recruit wrestlers. Keep an eye on that St. Rita defense here, but there's big yardage to be had to the outside. And a big gain on first down. Once again, it's Beadle. He got an opening in the middle of the line and took advantage of it. 21 yards on this carry, and he is not touched until right there. Yeah, he was literally untouched going through that line, a gaping hole opened up by the left side, a little zone action, if you will, and he read his blocks extremely well. Beadle, 57 yards on nine carries. This one takes it out to the 37 and a first down. Final three minutes of the third quarter. They'll stay with it with Beadle. Excellent ankle tackle. We'll take down Beadle before he can get anything going. St. Rita defense has come up big. They came up big at the end of the first half, only to have things turn on them. They'll need a stop here. You just feel one of the Kingsbury linebackers will have to make a play right here to ignite their team once again. Say we're to look for one more turnover. Each team has a turnover. Each team's turnovers to parlay into points. Or Coachy quickly. He'll complete it to Burke. Ryan Burke, middle of the field. Down inside of St. Rita territory. Yeah, if we get to see that one again, we'll see St. Rita risk reward. They're going to bring both inside linebackers. Watch all along. Yeah, see the linebackers coming? And what that did is that vacates the middle of the field. 26 yards. Because of that blitz, they picked it up. They got the ball into the hands of the receiver right in stride, and he did the rest. A really nice first pickup by Burke. Both teams with the 11 first downs as we enter the final two minutes of the third quarter. Wheaton North, the Falcons on the move. Beadle hit at the line, and that's where he is stopped. Well, back to Mark Forcucci. He's thrown a couple of touchdown passes tonight. You saw that delivery there moments ago to Burke. He has been right on the money all night long. Good penetration. There's your Kingsbury. This one's Matt, number 48. Now, yeah, linebackers are taught, see Coach Wardinsky, the linebackers are taught to read the play, react to the play, and then wrap up. You got a couple Kingsburys that know just how to do that. They complement each other, and they also are, you know, in, in great brotherly competition with each other to make plays. Staying on the ground. Beetle legs moving. Beetle with a flag thrown late behind the play. This would have been about a foot short of the first down if it stands. That is twice Luke Beetle has had big yardage called back. Hold on the right side of your screen. They flag it on Greg Fotinopoulos, the big right tackle. And the proper call is he got his hand, his left hand wrapped around the rusher for St. Rita's. Good call, easy call right there. So what would have been a third down and one becomes a second down and 19. Let's see if the Mustangs bring some pressure on Forcucci. Uh, they show everybody in the box what that's seven and eight in the box right there. Will they back off or will they come in and back off? 
Yardage up the middle. Yardage and more. And that not only got penalty yardage back, it sets up a third down at about three. Luke Beadle, 15 yards on the carry. Watching Beadle's left hand out, just follow his wide receiver, Kurt Hoven, right there. <laughs> he knows where his bread is buttered. You know, when you're a, a great wide receiver that catches the football, when, when you can block downfield like that, you're that much more valuable for your team. We played through three, only one score coming in this third quarter, and it was a big one. It came on the St. Rita side of the ball. The shutout was broken when Tommy Ulatowski, nothing to his left, everything to his right. 10-yard touchdown run, 21-6. We're going to the fourth. Great careers begin with Nika and the IBEW. Nika and the IBEW's 23,000 square foot training facility gives you real world practical experience. Earn as you learn as an electrical apprentice. You'll receive both the classroom and the hands on training you need to succeed. My education is being paid for and I'll have zero college debt. Health care, a great pension. You really can't do better than working in the electrical trade. Make this the last job application you will ever need to fill out. Apply now for the electrical apprenticeship. Nika and IBEW Local 34. It all starts here in the woods of Illinois. Walnut, hickory, oak, individually selected and harvested for your home. Each tree, each log, milled to perfection with the same attention to detail for two generations. It's not just wood, it's Corsaw hardwood lumber. Grown in Illinois, made in Illinois. Corsaw hardwood lumber, just west of Canton, on Route 9. The IHSA, committed to keeping student-athletes safe. Through educational initiatives and national partnerships, we're going the distance to develop safer protocols for our teams. Plus, we continue to improve scheduling and conditioning to reduce injuries from preseason through each state championship. 31 sports, 350,000 student-athletes, and one goal, player safety. The IHSA, the future plays here. The 2021 IHSA Football State Finals is brought to you by Layuna. Start your career in construction today at layunacareers.org. And by Menards. Save big money at Menards on all your home improvement needs. Great to have you with us here from Husky Stadium and the campus of Northern Illinois University. I'm Dave Bernhardt. Alongside is Mark Lindo, Donnie Tillman on the sidelines, and Tony Cornish Jr. handling our studios here tonight as we begin the fourth quarter. 21-6 lead for Wheaton North. It's third down and four. For Cucci, looking to make something happen. For Cucci, looking for a first down. He will not get there. And it will be fourth down and short. So, Mark, earlier, you had said when St. Rita had the ball after the interception, it was a must score. I get the feeling you're going to tell me this is a must stop for I the think, Mustangs. Yeah, I think it really is for a couple of reasons. One, you're chasing two scores, which is not insurmountable. You're also chasing the scoreboard now in the fourth quarter. So this at this juncture becomes the biggest football play of the game thus far moving forward. Wheaton North 0 for 1 on their only other fourth down attempt. They need to get inside the 25-yard line. Well, you hear the whistles and the timeout called by St. Rita. The Mustangs take this one eight seconds into the fourth quarter. Their first timeout here in the second half. And that's why that play is so important. St. Rita fears, feels the same way. Terry Quinn, their defensive coordinator, obviously wanted that timeout because they know this is indeed fourth and one, one and a half, a game situation right here. It's all, it's all about making a play now in the in the defensive line. Staying low, staying low to your opponents, get some push underneath. This is game three of four here on day two of the IHS State, State Football Finals in Class 5A. Fenwick knocked off Kankakee 34-15, and oh my goodness, 
If you get a chance, watch a replay of that Cary Grove East St. Louis game. You will not believe the game in its entirety and the way that game ended. 37-36, Cary Grove, third state title in school history. You see our score here in this 7A game, and then we can't wait for a couple of 12-1 and teams. Head agreed teams, Maine South and Lockport meeting for that Class 8A championship following this one. So they've showed double tight end, and now they spread things out on fourth down. Change in play. To the left. For Cucci. Down he goes. St. Rita defense coming up huge. Providing the pressure. Number 52. We've called his name all night. That's Pat Farrell. Pat Farrell, that's his third tackle for loss. That won't go as a sack, I don't think, but he certainly makes a play. <laughs> And St. Rita answers the bell at a critical time. They did with the score, and now they did with the stop. Mustangs taking over at their own 35-yard line. Trailing by 15. The defense, the previous possession, gave it to the offense by way of an interception. This time, by way of downs. Ulitowski, plenty of time. And now he has to fling it. Nothing open downfield. Smart play by Ulitowski because he was looking, looking, found nothing. Give coverage credit to the secondary of Wheat North. And then a very smart play by Ulitowski not taking a sack, staying even with the sticks and throwing that ball into no man's land. Ethan Middleton, you see him there, number 84. Sophomore, great speed. Second and 10. Short pickup. On second down, Middleton got that hand up. He rushed for over 100 yards in the semifinal win over Prospect. Kroger with a nice stop in the open field, making a play, negating any kind of opportunity for Middleton to extend that play from a short one to a long one. You see the two sophomores in the backfield, Stewart along with Middleton, number 20 and number 84. Two back set. St. Rita only two of nine on third downs. They need eight. Ulitowski to the right side. He has Middleton. He has the first down and more. Middleton across midfield. The chains will move. The ball at the 48-yard line of Wheaton North. 14-yard completion on third down. They lined up two sophomores in the backfield. One blocks. One goes Middleton into the flat. Catches that ball a bit of wheel route. Makes a couple guys miss. Moves the sticks. An exciting player that's going to be a really big-time player for all is said and done. Now Brown comes into the backfield. He gets it. He's going to throw. Downfield. Picked up. Intercepted by Tyler. Interception of the Caleb Brown pass. Good job, by O'Connor, because he never bit. Usually when Caleb Brown was going to touch, you'd think that he's going to run the football, but no, that ball's up there a long time. And O'Connor, just playing center field, was able to snare it right out of the air. Turnover, takeaway number two for Wheaton North. One was a fumble recovery, and this one an INT. So just as quickly as the Rita defense turn the ball over on downs to its offense, so does the offense give it back to Wheaton North by way of the interception. 10-28 to play in your 7-8 championship game. A 21-6 lead and the ball for the Falcons. They'd like Beetle to get a lot of touches in this drive. He's going to get this one. Power forward. Beetle with his 13th carry. He's gotten some hard-earned yards. He's also had some really big holes to work with. You know, this is one of those situations we talk about in football games where the defense now is going to play, run, play, run, play, run even more than usual. And so the offensive line has to perform at its highest effort of the evening right now because the defense expects to run. Can you open a seam or two when you are running? Play action pass for Cucci throwing. Short gain to Karsten Libby. For Cucci's pass complete. Karsten Libby. Karsten Libby did a good job staying inbounds, letting that clock continue to run. The 
Here we go again. Third down and five. Under 10 minutes to play. You see the leader there, number five, the senior, Mark Forcucci. Knocked down at the line. Once again, the St. Rita defense putting a stop to any ideas that Wheaton North would have. Number 50, Giuseppe Yurceta. So they brought six. Yurceta's the one that takes advantage of it. One on one, he gets that big paw up, knocks that down with his right hand. Really good job fighting off the block. This one a high spiraling kick and takes a great roll and it will where are they going to mark it would this be the second time tonight that the ball is inside the five yard line on a punt indeed it is twice tonight the punting game has come up big for Wheaton North and it'll be a tough way to go for St. Rita great coverage from Kyle Capel Time out on the field. It's here. The Menards Black Friday Sale. Hurry in for best selection. Price is good through December 5th. These Mucklucks ladies boots are warm and comfortable and come in a variety of styles. They're only $19.99 each. Stock up on toys for the little ones. Assorted Barbie dolls are just $2.99 each. Check out these and more amazing Black Friday deals at Menards. Available in store only while supplies last. There's more here than meets the eye. Corn is in the food that nourishes us. It's in the medicine and vitamins and other products that sustain us. It's in the daily essentials that help us navigate and create in the world. It's renewable and sustainable, better for our world and our future. Corn is all this and more. And the best part? It's homegrown by local farm families right here in Illinois. Lots of fans, lots of students, and the band from Wheaton North. And they like the look of the scoreboard. 21-6 here with 8.54 to play, Mark. You're playing a great game when all three facets of the game are clicking. Offense, defense, and we've, we've seen some special, special teams play tonight. Well, 67 yards on the punt, Kyle Capel made a tremendous play. And you talk about extra effort, hustle, all those intangibles. He dove into the end zone and batted the ball back before it crossed the end line to make, basically save 19 yards for his team. Twice tonight, St. Rita's had to start from its own one yard line because of a punt. The incomplete pass brings up second and 10, looking for Calvin Lee. So the Wheaton North, you talk about the third phase, their punt team has been executing. We talked about that. Their kick coverage, the kickoff coverage team has basically held St. Rita's kickoff return game under check. Special teams, big strong point for the Falcons here tonight in the championship effort. Milotowski once again retreats from his own end zone. He's able to dump it out and off the hands. Galvin Lee could not rope it in. That would have been enough for a first down. It is third down and 10. And it might have been enough for a first down and then some. Mm -hmm. Lee wide open, wide open on the check down. Look at that. He needed to turn back to catch the football first. He was trying to turn up field. Look, look at there's no one around him. <laughs> he see nothing but green grass in that picture. Number three, Caleb Brown. They'll send him to the right side. He'll be part of a triangle out there. Ulatowski delivers, not even close. Brown was the intended receiver, but Caden Libby was the closest man to the ball. And for the second time tonight, St. Rita will have to punt from their own end zone. And Devon Neal wants to get put some pressure. And St. Rita has to punt the football from their end zone. This will be against a cross breeze. Not completely cross, more maybe more in the face here of the punter, Connor Talty, as Tyler O'Connor deep, but he's only standing at the 45 yard line. Hey, 
End over in. O'Connor a chance with a return from the 35. To the 30. The Falcons will have great field position with 824 to play and a 21 to 6 lead. They'll have the ball inside the St. Rita 30 yard line. And suffice it to say, any kind of points on this possession, you would think with the time 823 would kind of steal things for the Falcons. If they could put any points on the board on this short field, they're going to be dealing with. And we'll keep an eye on that play clock as Mark Forcucci in all likelihood will want it to wind down. Of course, the big clock not moving right now, so no pressure to hold a snap. Beetle once again. Good, positive, three to four yards on first down. And now you can watch the snap clock, 35 seconds. It'll go down under five or six for every snap now. Beetle, he's finding a lot of yardage right up the middle. They found and they probed the defense of St. Rita, and that's where he's found his most success. 14 carries and 80 yards tonight for Beetle. A 21 yarder early had a couple of other big runs were called back by penalty. Beetle, two arms on the ball. The clock will continue to move. And remember, St. Rita used a timeout early in this half. Two remaining. Yeah, you're trying to get two and three yards. And you're also trying to use 35, 38 seconds on every snap now. Ross, Danstill, and Rex Kroger. They spend most of their time on the defensive side of the ball. They come in here offensively. They will line up in the wing on either side. Along with the tight end, Morrison. Motion from Kortenhoven. Porcucci plants. Looking to Morrison. He pulls it in. Porcucci on the money. The catch from Casey Morrison shielded his defender. It's first and goal at the four yard line. We see Porcucci twice roll to his right and throw back. This time he rolls to his left and is able to throw the ball away from the defense to his opponent for 20 yards. What great focus, concentration on a catch, but what arm strength again by Forcucci, rolling left, throwing right against his strong arm and putting that ball in a really tight window to set up short yardage opportunity. Up the middle, Beetle, head down, he stretches. Second and goal from the one. What a complete game Wheaton North has played to this juncture. <laughs> Offensive line telling Beetle one more time, number 30. Three of their huddle offense. Think Beetle's going to come right at you. Here he is. His dive. He's in. And Wheaton North stretches their lead to 27 to 6. The punt to the one yard line sets up the short scoring drive, sets up the short rushing touchdown. Yeah, you throw in the defense three and out along with that. That's what they call complementary football. Special teams set up the defense. Defense three and out set up a short field for the offense. Offense puts points to the board. How about that recipe for success? Straight at you for a 28 to 6 lead. Bangs off the video board here at Husky Stadium. It may not be the flashiest touchdown of the state finals, but it's a huge one for Wheaton North. Luke Beadle takes it in for a 28 to 6 lead. Third generation Union Labor. Uh, love fishing and hunting. And, uh, love construction. Uh, all the benefits, the insurance. Uh, the pay? Well, it's given me insurance that I've got for my kids. I've 
The money I make, I've been able to go on vacations when I want to. High school sports fans, relive your favorite moments. Just click the shopping cart below the video player to get your digital copy today. lost this year came in overtime in week three to a great fellow conference member in the Duquesne Conference. Great team in Batavia. Since then, they have won 10 straight. St. Rita also on a 10-game winning streak after dropping two of its first three, but it's going to take something pretty special right now for St. Rita as Luke Beadle has pushed that yardage number up to 84 yards in his 17 carries. From inside the five yard line, Brown will get a chance. They'll stretch him out. Caleb Brown will dance out of bounds. No room for the senior headed to Ohio State. Yeah, that's his third opportunity on kick return, and they've had him bottled up each and every opportunity. The biggest thing that we've seen tonight is that young man, number three. They've kept him in the ballpark. He's not been able to hit a home run. You'd think you'd see a 60, 70 yard play from him at some juncture, but Wheaton North has just been stellar on the defensive side. This was a 21 to nothing Wheaton North lead at halftime. It was 14 zip for Trent Gabriel returned a fumble 28 yards for his score with no time remaining. Yulatowski has to throw. And again. Off his receiver's hands, Calvin Lee can't handle it. Caleb Brown says, okay, Calvin, let's go get that next one. Yeah, Ulatowski's put a couple hands, put the ball in the hands a couple times, and receiver for St. Rita's have left a couple plays out on the field for that quarterback. He'll come back and still make another play. He will keep confidence in his teammates. Pressure on Ulatowski. He gets out of it. Now from the backside. Flags thrown just as Ulatowski goes down. He was being chased by Rex Kroger. It has not been an easy night for the three year starter. That's going to be a holding penalty on St. Rita. That was Devon Neal also chasing. Offense, number 56, 10 yards to the spot, three points are down. So things not looking good for St. Rita. The holding call plus an injured player inside the 10-yard line. You heard Todd Kuska at halftime. Dis injury timeout, injury timeout. Disappointed in the first half, but he said, you know, we've got two full quarters to play, but we North has been relentless here in the second half. The only score for St. Rita came on a 10 yard run by Ulatowski, and that came after an interception by Jake Lettinen. Yeah, you, you go you go down Wheaton North scores. They shut out Downers Grove South. They held Providence to just seven points. They held St. Charles North to three. Lake Park to seven points. Wheaton Wolverine South to eight. Geneva, they shut them out. They shut out Larkin. They held Hoffman Estates to eight. Willowbrook to three in that 10-3 defensive battle. And then only the six points on the board tonight. So that's the epitome of consistency on defense. Full two days of action here at Husky Stadium. This is how it looked yesterday in 1A. Lena Winslow, the 38-25 win for that 1A title. Willington picks up its second state championship. This one in 2A, 24-7 over Nashville. Then Byron totally controlled Unity. Pick up its first state title since 1999. What a special one we had in the 4A game. Julia Catholic Academy behind Jordan Anderson's 310 yards on the ground, 380 total offense. And then earlier today, Fenwick, 34-15. Kerry Grove, the one point thriller over East St. Louis and with 516 to play here in 7A, a 28-6 Wheaton North lead over St. Rita. Ilotowski having to throw from his own end zone. After that holding call, he got it to B.J. Hall. 
And how many times has he taken a snap from his own end zone today? Probably nine or ten different snaps have been from his own end zone. Two times. St. Rita had to start their one yard line. This time they, you know, because of the penalty started about the 10 yard line, he rolled by the end zone. So behind field position has been a big part of this football game, especially the second half. Needs 16 yards here on third down. They get it to Brown. He gets a block. Caleb Brown needs another block. Here come the blue jerseys. Brown will have the first down. He was looking for more than that. See that he gets the ball underneath the defense here. You get the ball in his hands. That's all you want to do. Nice block at the point of attack there. And then Brown's athleticism tries to do the rest. Well, this will not necessarily be a first down until they bring those chains across. I believe they will seek a measurement, and indeed they will. In any case, St. Rita will yet run yet another offensive play. It would be fourth and very, very short. I think they called for the change to come over. Here they come. And a little jump rope there for the Mustangs. Boy, we have a huge crowd oh my goodness, here yes. at Husky Stadium. East side bleachers really crowded. West side bleachers where we are at absolutely packed. So Braun unable to get the extra. Well, stretch that chain. I thought it was short. So I'll walk it over to the hash mark and. They had stretched the chain out earlier. Well, take a look at that. Now that's Wheaton North along with Lockport fans there. Wheaton North brought a huge crowd. Kerry Grove had actually occupied those stands in the previous game, but that's what's shaping up for your 8-8 championship ball game. What a night of championship football. What great weather tonight, too, huh? I mean, it's a fall night, but pretty crisp, clear. Well, it is the first down, so the Playing some optical illusions with those, that chain work here. First down, Mustangs. Ulatowski never had a chance. Joe Barna right in Ulatowski's face. Well, Barna made the hit on the scoop and score to end the half, and he makes a hit here. Kaboom right there. One on one. He wins the block, the line of scrimmage, flexes those muscles just a bit, and then a little bit of celebration with some teammates. So penalty flag at the 20 yard line. That's why our, our delay here. Yeah, the big ball. We have an unsportsmanlike conduct against St. Rita, number 71. That's just going towards the objection. That'll go half the distance to the goal. It'll be second down. And you can see the body language, the frustration starting to set in for the Mustangs. Val and Erickson headed to Missouri. Second down, 32 yards to go. wide to Brown. We're North fans kind of enjoying the festivities here tonight. I'm trying to think of any one moment, maybe an interception. That's the only moment they didn't have something positive happen tonight. Yeah, you know, you go back to you go back to Brother Rice. I mean, upset, maybe. Tonight, upset, maybe. Well, all, I, all I know is that they look like a championship football team, so in their own minds, they're Wheaton North's a favorite. They do whatever has to be yes. done to win a ball game. So we've set a complete game here tonight, the 7A title game. Once again, Ulatowski in his own end zone. Middleton just a bit overthrown. Hunting team was ready to come onto the field. They've been pulled back.
Ball Middleton cannot reel it in. Yeah, right on the hands. Elitowski's had what? Four or five drops tonight that he's put the ball in the receiver's hands. They haven't been able to finish the play for him and for their offense. And to the body language right now, St. Rita, they know this is a dire situation. They'll play hard on this one. Try to get some semblance of keeping the drive alive. On fourth down, they have to get to the 38-yard line. To the near side of the field. Pass broken up. It was Calvin Lee, the intended receiver. So the Falcons will get the ball back with 3.36 to play. Look at that defense. Three blue shirts surrounding the football. They know they can, you know, pin their ears back on the defensive line and play. And the secondary is. And look at that sportsmanship respect between these two programs. You know, and it was interesting right there. You saw the the assistance from Fred Elfman with Calvin Lee. And they came up, and you know, so many times we see players just joining each other, and that was just like, hey, nice game, man. And Mark Forcucci here will have the ball inside the 10-yard line. He'll give it to Beadle. It'll take as much time off of this clock. 3:30 and running. We North starting to feel it. Big turn. We talked about the big crowd. Big turnout of students for Week North as well. Their student section in the right corner of the West Bleachers is absolutely packed. Play clock is at 10. For Cucci is in no hurry. See those numbers winding down to the bottom of your screen. Beetle pulled down. Our scoring opened up tonight. 12 seconds into the second quarter after a scoreless first quarter. There's that play. The Beetle brought down by Giuseppe Yuseta. Scoring opened up the 38 yard touchdown pass from Fort Cucci to Seth Kortenhoven. Made it a 7 0 game, stretched to 14 0 when Casey Morrison reeled in a 29 yard pass from Fort Cucci. And then in the stunning play of the game, the final play of the first half, Trent Gabriel picked up a fumble, won 21 28 yards for a score, 21 0 at the half. St. Rita took advantage of an interception to cut up to 21 6, but then after an interception by Tyler O'Connor, Luke Beadle from a yard out, and that's where we sit 28 6 with 244 to play. As everybody here just kind of counting down the seconds, and the folks that are wearing red and black and maroon and white, they're getting ready for the 8 8 game named South coming up against Lockport. Coach Kusta. Knowing he did everything he could to prepare his team for a state championship run. One of the great coaches in the state of Illinois. His record speaks for itself. Beadle stays on his feet. It'll be fourth down and goal from there. North double tight end playing just smash mouth football on the inside. A little trap block. Beetle's also close. You know, it's it's been Beetle in the second half after Cortenhoven in the first half with his receiving, and it's been for Cucci the whole time, you know, taking care of this offense. But the pass game in the first half, the run game in the second half, and the way they complemented each other, just like the offense, defense, and special teams complemented each other. From the one yard line on fourth and goal. Beetle will go in. Luke Beetle's second touchdown run here in the fourth quarter. It becomes a 34 to 6 lead. Yeah, he, he takes flight with the aid of his lineman to celebrate that touchdown. Look at all the Wheaton North. Look at the big fellas up front, all there to celebrate. There's the flight. Take off. So the junior, a couple of one-yard touchdown runs here in the fourth quarter. Tyler O'Connor never comes off the field. The extra point is fifth, 35 to six. No 
students from Wheaton North happy? I don't know. And when they made the trip here to Cal, they penciled in a possible 35 to 6 win. Yeah. And we know we, we knew we'd have a physical football game. We knew we would have a a good football game that was you know going to be decided in the trenches with turnovers, with possession. And you know what? St. Rita's had more possession time, but they just have. Wheaton North has just been consistently excelling and with precision like workmanship in all three phases of this football game and they, they played almost a perfect game this was a team that folks were looking at, at the beginning of the season then lost that overtime game to Batavia and then Wheaton North kind of fell off yeah. the radar a little bit after that yeah, a, a good team right Wheaton North's a good team right but nobody talked about Wheaton North being a championship team but there's the site of a would-be championship at a buck 56. Well, when do you want to play your best game of the year? Your final <laughs> game of the year, right? Exactly. Caleb Brown had some exciting plays in the first half, just not enough. He'll be back deep. Let's see whether he gets a shot here. And this will start at the 20-yard line. These are the tough moments in a game, right? Right. I mean, both sides here. One side says, let's let that clock run. Let's get it going. The other side, you see there for St. Rita, the pants on the back, knowing that what they did this year, losing two of its first three games, lost to Mount Carmel in absolutely heartbreaking fashion in the first game on a blocked field goal return. Two weeks later, Loyola, a decisive victory over St. Rita, but then the Mustangs, all they did was rip off 10 in a row. And really dominated their way through the playoffs to get to this point. And those sophomores on that trip to Kentucky, that's where they kind of stepped up and made some plays. Middleton, the carry up the middle. I'll go with no huddle here. Tosky delivers wide, good coverage. They were looking for E.J. Nawagwu. Nawagwu has been somewhat quiet tonight. He's been the deep threat, and they never really had a chance. As we north all night long, was coming at Ulatowski from all different directions. Yeah, they brought a really nice package. They they blitzed at different times from different places. Really confused the blocking scheme with St. Rita up front. Did it with a lot of speed, to be perfectly honest with you. B.J. Hall cannot squirt three, cannot squirt free Joe Barna. Defensive end on the tackle. Enough for a first down, however. Less than 90 seconds to play. Plenty of time, Yulatowski cranks it up deep. And it is picked up. Lucas Pacer, the interception, second interception of the night for the Falcon defense. And the third takeaway overall, Pacer is the one that seals the deal. They certainly can choose to go to victory formation now. Bielitowski had no choice but to throw a deep ball, quite honestly. And the celebration on the west sideline for the Falcons is beginning. St. Rita disappointment twice in the last two years. The last two years that we've had state football finals, it was in 5A in 2019. The Mustangs lost to Rochester, finished runner-up for Wheaton North. They have not had a state championship in this century. The last ones in 1979, 81, and 86. Back in the Jim Rexilius days. North was a perennial power back in those days. St. Rita calls timeout, and I'm going to assume we're going to see a bevy of substitutions. You're looking at Seth Kortenhoven, our Lyuna player of the game. What a first half Kortenhoven had. He established it starting with the touchdown reception to get things started. He was all over the field. His quarterback, Mark Porcucci, had a way of finding him. This was big. In the first quarter, Kortenhoven turns that short pass into a big gain. Porcucci, the plant, 
Cranks it up. Kortenhoven does the rest. Seth Kortenhoven, the big play guy, got it from the steady guy. For Kuchi to Kortenhoven, there's Seth Kortenhoven, your Lyuna player of the game. Six catches, 160 yards, and you just saw his touchdown. Yeah, his first half, the 21 point first half for Wheaton North. The defense scored seven of those points, but he put up 12, uh, two touchdown reception, which really got his team going. Had a drop early, and then everything, his hands were like glue. So that is knee number one. And the Wheaton North fans been on their feet all night long. They've been making noise all night long, and they are just watching the big clock. They are packed in here at Husky Stadium, ready to completely erupt. It will take one more snap of the ball. And that will do it. In dominating fashion, in a complete football fashion. Offense, defense, special teams. Wheaton North had it all. Your Class 7A state champions, the Falcons from Wheaton North High School. You had said it, Mark, was it an upset last week? When Wheaton North defeated Brother Rice, a lot of folks thought so. Was it an upset here tonight? Well, if you'd have talked to people on Wednesday, they would have said, yeah, maybe this would have been an upset tonight. But of those folks that watched four quarters of football, you saw a complete team, an outstanding team here in Class 7A. And it was in tonight's ball game, flat out a football clinic in all three phases as they just performed at a high level. Uh, there was a bunch of individual battles that were won, parlayed into team battles that were won, a nice blend between the passing game, the running game, and defensively, nice job with some takeaways, nice job with some blitz packages, special teams, really good job with kickoff coverage, really good job with punt, the punt team, you name it, they excelled at it tonight. That's why they're the 2021 state champions of 7A. It was an odd season last year, right? There was no fall season. There was a spring season. No playoffs, maximum of six games. And that was back in March and April. And then all of a sudden, you see a team that has success in the spring. They win it all in the fall here in 2021. And their head coach, Joe Wardensky, is with Donnie Tillman. Coach, what's the ride been like uh, all the way to a state championship? It's It's been incredible. You know, the community really got behind this group, and the student body got behind this group. And... We felt like we had a good good team coming back from that spring season and a lot of great senior leadership with this group. So for them to put a season together like this, it's, it's very gratifying. Talk about this game. I mean, obviously uh, on, you know, every spectrum, every stat, offense, defense, special teams, you guys really got it done. Yeah, you know, early on, we, we they got down in the red zone a few times and we forced them to try some field goals and they didn't convert on those. And I think that gave us some, some momentum. And then, uh, you know, at the end of the half, that big strip and scoop and score, that was huge for us. You played your final spring game here. You played your final fall game here. Pretty cool for this team. Yeah, you know what? We actually talked about it a little bit last year, trying not to get ahead of ourselves. But, you know, we knew we were a pretty uh, strong group last year with those juniors and that they were coming back. And, you know, in the back of our mind, we always hoped we'd get here, and, and luckily we did. Now uh, you're headed back for the state championship. Congratulations, Coach. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. All right, guys, back to you. 35 points on the board tonight, only allowing six. This was the final score of the night. The fifth of five touchdowns and a state championship for the high-flying Falcons. It's here, the Menards Black Friday Sale. Hurry in for best selection. Price is good through December 5th. Protect guns, ammo, and other valuable items in this secure 30-gun fire safe. Get it for $499 after rebate. This large 12-quart air fryer has seven cooking options. The perfect gift for your favorite foodie, just $79.99. Check out these and more amazing Black Friday deals at Menards. Available in-store only while supplies last. 
At Illinois State University, our legacy is one of preparing students to create, to explore, to lead, to make an impact. Our students graduate on time, find success in their field, and make a difference in the world. That's our legacy. What will yours be? Create your legacy at Illinois State University. There's more here than meets the eye. Corn is in the food that nourishes us. It's in the medicine and vitamins and other products that sustain us. It's in the daily essentials that help us navigate and create in the world. It's renewable and sustainable, better for our world and our future. Corn is all this and more. And the best part? It's homegrown by local farm families right here in Illinois. We know it's difficult to decide where to invest first each year. But your farm and family depend on it. We want you to have your most successful season yet. And that's why we've cataloged over 12 million corn plants and 20,000 germinating seeds. Whether you're just beginning to monitor equipment performance or fine-tuning your equipment, our dealers are here to help. This is your year to know that you're doing the best you possibly can for your farm and your family. Moments away from awarding the state championship trophy to the Wheaton North Falcons. St. Rita still flustered about their head coach, Todd Kuska, and now they will move onto the field. Second time in two years, second time in two consecutive appearances here in the state championship game, St. Rita to pick up the runner-up trophy. Dave Bernhard along with Mark Lindo, Donnie Tillman with us, Tony Cornish Jr. And the Mustangs, it's not the one they wanted, but it's the one that they will once again put in their trophy case. Great season, 10 game winning streak comes to an end. St. Rita finishes this season with three losses, two of those three losses coming in the first three games. But tonight, they just absolutely ran into a buzzsaw. It was, you heard Joe Wardinsky just moments ago, the head coach for Wheaton North say, stopped them and held them to a couple of missed field goals. That was huge early, but then Wheaton North finished it late. St. Rita Mustangs representing the Catholic League. And there is the runner-up trophy for St. Rita. Eleven and three, the final record for St. Rita. And when you take a look at winning streaks, it becomes an 11-game winning streak for Wheaton North. That 11th victory coming here on this Husky Stadium turf. The 11th straight, just one loss in a year. It came in overtime early in the season. And in a complete and a completely satisfying performance. Wheaton North will bring home this big trophy. Well, they could not have played any better tonight than they did. It was a championship performance in front of a championship kind of crowd and atmosphere here in the Cal. And now your 2021 Class 7A state football champions. The Wheaton North Falcons. Who's going to get a first mark for Gucci? And up it goes. And at some point or another tonight, Mark, everybody's going to get a hand on that trophy. That will be passed around all weekend long. I guarantee you that. And well deserved because it was a total team effort. And you go all the way down to, you know, the scout team and the prep team and the game film and all of those things leading up to these playoffs. How about the grind of a playoffs? I mean, you know, you did that, uh, you did the playoff pairing show, what, on October 30th, 31st, something like that. And, and since then, we've seen an awful lot of good football throughout the state of Illinois. We saw some good football from those men in blue tonight. An awfully good football players with Donnie Tum and Seth Partenhoven. joined by the player of the game uh, took a little bit for you guys to get going but once you did you didn't stop yeah I know uh, we had a little slow start but we're just we just uh, pushed through on adversity and we just we just clicked and then uh, everything seemed to go together and we got rolling and then they couldn't stop us 
I would ask you what you saw out there, but a lot of it was daylight and the end zone. So talk about that a little bit. Yeah, I mean, Mark is an amazing quarterback. We have such a good connection that he just knows where I'll be. And he puts it up there so I can make plays. And it's just, just amazing, yeah. How does it feel to be a state champion? It feels amazing. I mean, we worked so hard for this. To see all that hard work pay off, it's just amazing. All right, congratulations. Go celebrate with your team. All right, I'll send it back to you. Thanks, Donnie and Mark. You know, you hear Seth Carton Hovind, you take a look, and he, it's almost disbelief. Not necessarily that they win a state championship, but how they played. Congratulations to the Wheaton North Falcons, your 7A state champs, 35-6 over St. Rita. Other dealers tell you why to buy from them. At Bob Grimm Chevrolet, we want our customers, like Brittany, to share the day they experience the Bob Grimm way. Best experience I had buying a car, and I will definitely come back in the future. Make 2021 the year you drive away in a Chevrolet, the Bob Grimm way. Do you see the world the way I do? I'm kind of an artist. I take random things around the house and make them into the most amazing sculptures. Evan! At OSF Healthcare Children's Hospital of Illinois, they see the world the way I do. They put kids first with care designed just for me. Great careers begin with Nika and the IBEW. Nika and the IBEW's 23,000 square foot training facility gives you real world practical experience. Earn as you learn as an electrical apprentice. You'll receive both the classroom and the hands-on training you need to succeed. My education is being paid for and I'll have zero college debt. Healthcare, a great pension. You really can't do better than working in the electrical trade. Make this the last job application you will ever need to fill out. Apply now for the electrical apprenticeship. Nika and IBEW Local 34. Your car is more than just transportation. It's a gathering place. Your mobile community. At CefQ, we get that. So we offer car loans with great rates, flexible terms, and no hidden fees. We work with you to get the loan you need for the vehicle you want. Because getting there together is better than going it alone. CefQ, not a bank, better. Start your next project at Builder's Warehouse. We have over 15 colors of vinyl laminate flooring in stock, starting at $1.85 a square foot. Get it done at Builder's Warehouse on Southwest Washington Street or visit us online at bwpeoria.net. In the foreground, you see the final score of our 7A championship game. In the background, you see the two teams taking the field for the 8A championship, Main South and Lockport, coming up. Dave Bernhardt along with Mark Lindo. And Mark, uh, folks are telling me early in the year, Wheaton North is a really good football team. And then as the year went on, hey, you know what? They're really good. Tonight, the Falcons were great. Superlative. How much fun was that to watch their defense just fly around to the football? They just made plays in the defensive line. Their linebackers made plays. They brought corners up to put pressure on the quarterback, Ulatowski. They, put, uh, they brought safeties into the box just to complete game defensively. And you know what? They get another team with to one touchdown. Just unbelievable what their defense did all year long and they did it throughout the playoffs which just proves how stellar that defense was and he's throwing the special teams tonight which were unreal a return a fumble return for a touchdown two punts down at the one yard line just great execution great hustle by their special teams gunners getting down there making plays and and one more thing you, you got to throw out again was mark for their quarterback i mean he is just an incredible talent. He's not the flash. He's, he's not the fastest. He doesn't have the strongest arm. He doesn't have any of those things, but he's going to have a ring pretty soon. Hey, you excited to get ready for this 8A game? Might be a good one. There'll be some popping going on. I know that. <laughs> Indeed. Lockport and Main South coming up, but for now, let's go over to the side, upstairs. We'll go to Tony Cornish, Jr. What a big win by Wheaton North. You have to salute the Falcons the way they came out, kept the energy high, and they kept their foot on that gas pedal in that second half. Defensively, played strong, played consistent, remained focused. Offense, consistent as well. Kept putting points on the board, kept the pressure on St. Rita. They walk away with a state championship. Their fans, as you probably can hear behind me, still elated. They're celebrating on the field. And a great championship, great way to end the season. And St. Rita, again, played with a lot of heart and courage throughout the season.
season 11 and 3 nothing to be uh, nothing to worry about in terms of uh, their self esteem again great season throughout a lot of respect throughout the state the way they play the Mustangs tradition is strong they will return they'll be back sometime down the line to this uh, state championship arena no doubt about that we're going to wait and see what happens with Wheaton North we were trying to see if we could uh, talk with one of the players but they're still taking pictures down in the field right now and celebrating as they should the culmination of a tremendous season and again you cannot display you can't talk enough about the effort they displayed throughout all four quarters they came out strong the defense led the way no doubt about that all throughout that uh, all throughout this ball game and again defense still wins championships the old adage is correct and they win tonight and uh, in convincing fashion here at Husky Stadium we've got a class 8a championship game that's on the way we're going to take a look at that and give you a little preview of what's coming up as the teams take the field here in DeKalb don't go away there's more exciting high school football on the way right here on the IHSA Sports Network Illinois State University, our legacy is one of preparing students to create, to explore, to lead, to make an impact. Our students graduate on time, find success in their field, and make a difference in the world. That's our legacy. What will yours be? Create your legacy at Illinois State University. There's more here than meets the eye. Corn is in the food that nourishes us. It's in the medicine and vitamins and other products that sustain us. It's in the daily essentials that help us navigate and create in the world. It's renewable and sustainable, better for our world and our future. Corn is all this and more. And the best part? It's homegrown by local farm families right here in Illinois. here. The Menards Black Friday Sale. Hurry in for best selection. Prices good through December 5th. Whether at the job site